Current flooding and water quality conditions are attributed not only to the city's growth, but also to upstream runoff in the DeSoto, Manatee, and Sarasota County portions of the Big Slough. During significant rain events, ponding can also occur. Ponding occurs in low-lying areas that are characterized by poorly drained or supersaturated soils. With back-to-back -back rainfall events, the ground is totally saturated, which increases the runoff during a storm. The city works hard to maintain its stormwater conveyance system, which is comprised of roadside swales draining into 79 miles of named waterways and 132 miles of retention ditches that interconnect with each other and with the Myakkahatchee Creek. There are 64 water control structures, of which 23 are gated water control structures, 5 are gated drop structures, 28 are fixed weir structures, and 8 are drop structures. The control elevations of these structures are designed so that water is retained in the waterways in a step-down elevation system configuration. This means the water levels in the waterway segments between structures progressively decrease in elevation from north to south and from east to west. This system configuration allows both retention of stormwater runoff for water quality treatment and storage for potable water use. In preparation for a storm, the gates are opened as needed to convey floodwaters. The city has an ongoing program to inspect and replace old corroded structures. Since 2006, 13 of the high priority structures have been replaced or rehabilitated. The city also has a program to clear the ditches of sediment deposits that have accumulated over time and clear fallen trees and debris in the Myakkahatchee Creek. This also helps restore the flow capacity of the waterways. Long story short, Northport is prone to flooding, but the city works hard to maintain conveyance channels, water control structures, Soundtrack. and Check. procedures. Okay. There we Super. go. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. Okay. We're ready to go. Okay. Today is Wednesday, April 17th. It's 9 a.m. We are in the city chambers, and I call this city commission special meeting to order. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting. This meeting has been properly noticed and will be conducted as a hybrid meeting requiring the use of communications media technology. A physical quorum of voting members is present. In city commission chambers, a hybrid meeting allows voting members to attend and participate without being physically present in the room where this quorum is convened. Uh, present are myself, Mayor White, Commissioner Langdon, Commissioner McDowell, Vice Mayor Stokes. And uh, we're going to hear from Commissioner Emrich. I think. Mm -hmm. Yes? Is he coming on? Do we know? What's the plan? As far as I'm aware, he should. He should be on? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, these are slick. You got little clips on them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what do we do? Move forward. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We can okay. come back when he joins okay. us. Thank you. So we'll do that motion after he comes on, obviously, and reads his statement. All right. Uh, also present, we have City Manager Fletcher, <coughs> Assistant City Attorney Golan, Assistant City Clerk Powell, Board Specialist Bodmer, and Police, Fire. We do have representatives here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Okay, we'll move to the Pledge of Allegiance. Doug, would you mind leading us into the, oh, certainly. the pledge? Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God divisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm looking for 
Approval of the agenda. Don't move. Second. All right, we have an approval for the agenda by Vice Mayor Stokes, seconded by Commissioner Langdon. Uh, we're not going to do a voice vote because he's not yeah. here yet. Yeah, right? we'll do the okay. voice votes. I thought we were doing a voice vote. No, no, because he's not. He's not. Okay. He's not here yet. All right. Didn't make myself clear. And that's four to zero. Okay. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? No, we do not. All right. We're moving on to item three. Welcome and overview. Um, city manager, this is your item. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the reason why we are here today, uh, first of all, we want to apologize for not catching the fact that we needed Doug Thomas to come back to speak to us today. So we're glad that he is here um, representing SDR, who has worked with you and the board on several occasions in order to finalize our strategic plan. Um, last time we met, we um, discussed some of the programs and priorities, and there were some edits and corrections made. So we believe that today we have in front of you a completed document for your approval. Um, and now I will welcome Mr. Doug Thomas and um, introduce him to the board and get started. Great, thank you, Jerome. It's always good to be back in Northport as well. It's always a good sign. I work with a lot of councils that are very challenging at times. This is not one of them, but um, sometimes they can't even agree on the agenda. So when I saw a 4 vote, that's a good start on the <laughs> process. Sometimes they go off in that direction. Um, and so as Jerome mentioned, we apologize. We uh, and your staff, as we were here, um, earlier last fall uh, to walk through some changes and issues. Um, we think we thought we had everything kind of buttoned up and then uh, I think your team had found out that there was a desire to come back and revisit it one more time. So we we're, we're apologize that we missed that as well as your, your team on that. But we're here today to be able to, uh, to come back to present kind of where we were, um, what has changed since we were last here to work through the challenges and issues that you all faced. Uh, as you were working through your strategic planning and strategic visioning process uh, with the goal today of being able to kind of work your way through that, make sure we heard exactly what you wanted to do, that we've got everything the appropriate way, and then we want to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what the next steps will be as you go forward from that point. So with that, if I can get the agenda brought up so I can see it and everybody else can see it. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the main screen. There we go. Super. Okay. So as I mentioned, we, um, uh, the last time we touched this process was back in September 25th of uh, 2023. And uh, we went through, you may recall, there was a lot of discussion and concern as you went through the previous iteration of the strategic vision when you were going through your ranking process. And you had held a workshop at some point. Uh, I was not here for that. It was one of your regular workshops as part of your, your regular meeting schedule. And there was a lot of kind of angst and frustration and how do we rank this? How do we make this work as well? And so um, I took the data that we had had from that process. Uh, we came back in the fall then in September to take a look and said, here's how we could interpret that. But at that point, there was kind of a, a consensus that you wanted to come back and maybe re re refine the plan a little bit more, take some of the priorities out. So we suggested a way of doing that process. And so that's kind of what we did back in September. And then we've been working with staff on getting that together and then also refining your, um, your success indicators that you're trying to track your measurements of those efforts as well. So today, you've got a report, I believe staff has provided you kind of the latest draft of the revisions of that document. So we'll be largely working from that, although I'll have them up on the screen for a review today. But what I'd like to do initially is just touch base on where we last left off, make sure you know, what you wanted to do in your strategic visioning and plan, just bring you back to that point and then walk you through the vision, the mission, the values, organizational values, just so we're kind of in the mindset of what you're trying to accomplish in your strategic visioning. Uh, and then we're just going to walk our way through the document to make sure this is what we heard, what staff heard, make sure we've got it in the appropriate place from there. So with that in mind, um, I want to start back, as, as we say, I always talk about strategic visioning that really if you want to make sure you ultimately are advancing and achieving the goals and the objectives that you've all established as elected officials, uh, that you got to have a plan. Otherwise, you're just kind of walking around and wandering around and you don't really know what you're doing. You don't have a way to track whether you're having success or making any measurements. And, 
And uh, in many cases, without a plan, um, we refer to it in our business and city management as the, the uh, end the goalposts get moved all the time. You know, you think you're there and all of a sudden you're changing something else and you're trying to go forward. So this is something that we really encourage organizations to do and to have in place so that you can have some clear direction and you can align your staff and the focus and the things that are important to you as elected officials. Um, use this slide before as well. We're going to try to keep you at the highest levels as much as possible, but we realize this is a group that likes to look at measurements and things of that nature. And so uh, Jerome and the team have been very welcome and open to receptive to making sure that the measurements that they're using uh, reflect what you're trying to accomplish. And so this is a little bit, I, I will bring you down a little bit less than 10,000 feet from time to time just to make sure you're comfortable with those plans and those objectives. Uh, but the goal here is we'll try not to get you too far to the weeds and try to keep you as high as possible in terms of the visioning of their process. Uh, you've heard me talk before about VUCA. Uh, VUCA is a process that came out of the War College that the reason um, uh, during the fall of the Soviet Union at the time, or the, the, the traditional Soviet Union, um, the War College started training their military officers to understand the challenges of a complex world and having to make decisions on the battlefield or in the command rooms or on you know, wherever they may be to try to understand and react to things that are happening. And so to a large extent, your strategic vision is taking into account the things that we call VUCA. So just as a, a summary on that, VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and then ambiguity. Um, I'm sure you all in your daily lives and certainly in your roles as elected officials deal with these things pretty regularly. You have a plan, you have an action, something comes up, we have to turn around and make a pivot in the process. And the reason we think VUCA is so important is that if you look on the left-hand side of the slide, you have the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, you can see kind of the drivers that affect those things. And then in the absence of having some vision and understanding and clarity and agility, which is a different way of saying VUCA, which is what you're trying to achieve in these plans, it gives you a way to navigate that process from uncertainty to certainty, at least to the extent that is possible. So this is what we're trying to accomplish in the programs and the elements of your strategic visioning. Um, as I say, you guys have been doing a great job. It's been about three years now in the process of your strategic, your rebinding strategic planning effort. Uh, and you're going to go through these growing pains and adjustments and twists till it kind of feels right and comfortable. And that's entirely normal. And we see this happen across, across the country in organizations as well. I thought it would be helpful before we dig into the actual plan to just go back. You may remember um, before I do strategic visioning with, with each community, I sit down and have a chance to chat with each of you individually and ask a variety of questions. So I get a feel for kind of where you are individually and where you are collectively. So I thought it would be helpful just to bring you back to where you were about the things that you felt were most important that you wanted to achieve while you were on the city commission. And so these are not in any particular order. They're basically coming from the previous presentation, environmental focus, uh, focus on tree ordinances, looking at development and trying to preservation of your, your native trees, um, that you want people to feel engaged in part of this organization and part of this community and the services that you provide. Uh, you wanted to focus on providing places where people could socialize and gather kind of a living room, a public living room and public living room spaces. Uh, you want to be certainly focused and you wanted people to have pride in their community and there was a recognition of your community pool. It was a long time decision and, and opened several years back. Uh, this one I've been following. I tend to follow my communities closely, so I tend to watch the news and keep you in, in effort. So I know, uh, remember, this was dated back. You were dealing with a master plan, dealing with a developer after the post storm and what you were going to do. I know that shifted a little bit, but there were some desires to, to really focus in on warm mineral springs. Um, There's a desire to, to continue to do, um, to focus on economic development. In this case, it was a business leadership seller, uh, center, uh, trying to see if that could be supportive of, of your diversification of your businesses and industries here. Now, uh, you get some street projects, Biscayne, Price Boulevard, East West Connectors, uh, stability of your city management, were all things that were considered that you wanted to be known for. Uh, as a group, you wanted to be recognized that you were deliberative and, and did the research, did the homework, so to speak, on your actions, and that you have to set the stage for the organization going forward for the long term. And like many organizations that are going through rapid growth and change, every time I come back here, yeah, there's new construction going on, so I, I can appreciate that. Uh, but the bottom, it's always a challenge of trying to make sure that you keep the kind of the nature and the soul and the, the DNA of your current community 
as you're growing and new people and new development take place. I know I felt that when I was in Lakeland. We felt like between Tampa and Orlando, they were just kind of cascading on us. And how do we keep the soul of our, of our community in play? Um, and then this effort of, of, as that development occurs, make sure that you maintain green space, that you don't become overdeveloped, over um, where paved, if you will, that you want to make sure that there was a, 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 an environmental focus in your development. A couple things that also want to bring you back to about, I always ask, what do you want to change and what do you want to keep the same in the midst of it? So things that you want to change is recognizing that as growth occurs, it changes your demographics. And how do those folks that have different thoughts and opinions and things that they thought worked well or didn't work well in a community, how does that work well here in, uh, in Northport? Um, over the last several years, there's been a real focus on this commission and your staff to try to increase the impression or the increase the taxable value uh, moving from residential to commercial. It's hard to do a fully residential community without having a pretty high tax burden. And this group has been very much focused on that. Uh, I know this one, I just saw some news last week, <laughs> the well and the annexation issue is still kind of working your way through that. Um, so that continues to be on your radar as an issue that you'd like to get resolved once and for all. Um, and that you also are looking at good development and trying to get some high level investors to come in and do some transformative developments. Once again, economic development, the change of your tax base. Um, some other things you want to change, the annexation of some property that was in the south of the Warm Mineral Springs, um, that you were trying to create more of a live, work, play environment here where people didn't have to commute out of Northport for their employment, that they could stay in the community. Um, trying to engage your nonprofits and your social service groups so that you could be kind of a, a, a sole provider, but regardless of who does the services, that you could all kind of refer people back and forth as necessary in order for them to be effective. Um, that you've got a pretty ambitious plan. You'd like to have everything done <laughs> at the end of the day. That's, the, that's certainly a common expectation that we see in elected officials as well. And also that it sometimes seems like it takes forever to get things done. Um, that, it just, it takes a while, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, we, we say, if we just, in this effort, a lot of people say if you design a system that was gonna be quick and efficient, you probably wouldn't design it the way we have to operate in Florida. I mean, it's built to have certain things that are slowed down and public input and reactions and built-in timetables, and so that has a factor. Uh, but along that line, recognizing you're dealing with tax base, how do you fund and fix infrastructure challenges uh, overall here in, in South Florida, Southwest Florida, excuse me. Um, and what you want to keep the same, you want to keep the natural character and the beauty of Northport. Uh, it's always nice when I come in, you get big welcome signs, the pedestrian pathways that come about, people are out walking and all that. It has a nice feel to it. I think you want to make sure that you retain that as well. Uh, but you also recognize that when you look at your long-term build-out plan, that you're not going to be a small town for a while. You, at some point, you're going to be a big city. And do you have the right mix and the amenities and all those things that come with expectations of services and recreational and entertainment venues and all those things that happen with that as well. Um, that you're recognized as a pretty high quality service provider and you wanna make sure that you don't lose that in the midst of it. Uh, and that you're recognized the value of quality of life through recreation and parks and recreation and environmental sustainability, that this should be done in a way. That's such a critical element, I'll tell you, as I work with communities across the country, especially in the economic development, it's not just landing the business, it's the employees that come with it. And employees are looking for that overall balance of life, quality, recreation, school systems, all that is an important element. And so communities that kind of lose sight of that kind of miss, they're just looking at the dollars and cents and not realizing to be successful, you have to have a talented workforce to support those. So you guys are certainly, in, and many of your plans that, and priorities will reflect these, but I always want to bring you back to it in case we miss anything that you might want to add as well. And then I ask also if you don't have something now, but you want to have it within the next decade, what are those things that you want to make sure happen in Northport? And so Warm Mineral Springs uh, really becomes better recognized, becomes a destination point. Um, there was a discussion, obviously, with your P3. I know that's been changed over time. There are some annexation issues we talked about earlier, but trying to recognize that's an asset for the community. And it's right now, I get the sense that you all feel it's not fully tapped and maximized in terms of what it can bring to the community. So I know that's, a, that's kind of a work in process. Um, affordability of housing was an issue. And we'll talk a little bit about some of your goals and your, your objectives that you have in your strategic plan. 
Uh, many communities have gone to these tiny home concepts to try to help that out. I know that as you have in Florida in particular, I think our cost of housing is one of the highest in the country. Uh, cost of insurance and housing is also the highest in the country right now. And so there's a lot of communities, not just here, but in other parts of the state and other parts of the country that are all dealing with affordability. But this was one that you had addressed. How do you deal with that? Maybe there's some angles that you might want to try differently as a pilot project. I know you've got a couple I-75 interchanges that are on the planning stages with funding and design elements that are taking place. That will certainly have some impacts on your community. And then uh, a development of your activity center number six. Uh, in the eastern part, having that become fully developed. And that's part of growth. With people, they're going to want services and programs and expectations of things that are relatively close to them as well. Some other items that you wanted in the next decade, more primary jobs, not just service-related jobs. Um, you want to try to get a couple large employers uh, that could help diversify your economy and diversify and, once again, achieve that goal of live, work, and play in your community. Uh, the de-annexation issue is resolved. Um, the, this is one that's a bit of a challenge, but I suspect because of the way this community has evolved over time, a central downtown. You've kind of got a feel for it, but it, you, know, you kind of have a lot of different commercial centers. So that's one that, uh, you know, there's a desire to, to do that where you have that kind of public gathering place or places to come forward. Um, once again, dealing with economic development, trying to reduce the number of jobs and the, the, uh, the leakage of your employees and the leakage of your uh, labor force. So what can you do as a community to help spur job development, job training, skills, elements like that? And then um, the mixture of your commercial versus residential tax base has continued to be a goal. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you started kind of a revised process about three years ago. So from a strategic planning effort, uh, you're still kind of in the infant stage, if I could use the parental <laughs> goal at that point. And the things that you're facing now are things that most organizations go through. Uh, they all look and feel differently, but I don't want you to feel like you overshot or missed the mark or anything else. This happens a lot. Ultimately, every community has to embrace the model they use. And every community does things a little bit differently. And they generally start off with what I call like the moonshot. And it becomes super and expansive and program. And then reality sets in to say, how do we manage this beast? Um, so in the one aspect, we want to make sure that you capture the goals and objectives, but you want to do it in the most efficient and refined way as possible. And so every organization goes through this. I know when I was in Lakeland, uh, I was there as a manager for close to 12 years, and it took me about five years before I felt that our plan was where I wanted to be, where it all of a sudden it started being recognized as a, as a very robust plan and linked with our budgeting process the way I felt. So you're still kind of in that stage, but you're getting closer to it. So just understand the challenges you're facing are not that, that difficult. So basically, as I say, you're basically at kind of the front end of this, but you're about to step into the teen area in terms of its development programs. So. Um, what I would say is that I know in talking with Jerome and your team, the goal here, the, the best management practice is to have a strategic plan and have it linked to your budget. So that basically you don't have a document that sits on one side of the shelf and then you get a budget document that sits on the other side of the shelf and they really don't connect. Your goal ought to be, if these are your goals and priorities, this is what you want to do, these are long-term efforts, you want to be able to link those ultimately to your budget. And I know that's a process you're, you're working towards. And that's why this recovery, this meeting today, is critical as you approach your budget for the upcoming fiscal year to make sure that the staff knows where you're at as well. So continue that quest. Uh, that also is not something that happens overnight. That takes a while to develop as well. But you're, you're well on your path in that. So, But as I say, you're going to encounter some some detours and some issues, and hopefully today we've been able to resolve most of those to make sure it fits your goals and objectives and what you're trying to accomplish. And we're certainly pleased to help you along that journey. I say it is a, it is a journey. It's not just a destination. You're going to make this, this one step in front of the other going forward. So the effort here is to take the effort of your established vision, the mission, the why, why you exist, the mission of how you do things, the values in which you're going to carry out those functions and responsibilities, to ultimately establishing your pillars and priorities, which we're going to focus on today. That will lead to programs, projects, and services, and then key indicators. So the goal here is everything is aligned back to accomplish your overall vision of where you're trying to take the organization and the community. So you're, you're on that path. We're just kind of working through some of the logistics of that point. So as we work through your strategic vision document, 
when we met back in March, um, we did a team building exercise and started the process on the 7th and then on the 8th we actually focused and, and kind of worked through this. At that point, we had a total of seven pillars and 69 priorities. And you'll see where they're all broken down in terms of the different seven priorities and how many things are out there. And you're tracking about 91 key success indicators. And I'll tell you, for a community this size, that's not, that's not unrealistic. Um, but where you struggled with was when you were trying to prioritize your goals and objectives, uh, 69 priorities was a lot. <laughs> and there was some desire to say, how do we, get, do we have the right model? Do we need to tweak it? Do we need to adjust things? And things of that nature. And so from that point, we were asked to come back to work with you after you had done your prioritization process. And back, that was on September 25th. And we worked through a very deliberative process of saying, all right, let's really focus on where your actual priorities are. And some things that you identified as priorities, I suggested, might be better suited as simply supporting programs or initiatives that would be in support of that, but wasn't necessarily a priority. And in the past, they were identified as priorities. So once again, that's a common effort to do that. So we worked through that day and made a lot of adjustments, uh, captured a lot of notes, and had you go through some soul searching about, are these the right priorities, or are some of these things really just programs that we ought to just say, yeah, they support that priority, but they're not a priority. So as a result of that, we went through this adjustment, and we got to seven pillars. We retained the seven pillars, but from 69, we got down to 33 priorities. So a much smaller number, um, well, about half of where you were from there. And you can see how those broke through. And then currently, we have a list of 87. And I think we were at 90, 91, yeah. So we went 91 to 87. And there's still some areas that those might change. It's hard. I'm reluctant to do a lot of changes in your, your performance indicators because you start tracking data, and then all of a sudden you shift it. Then you've got to kind of start the process all over again. But there, there are some things that are work in progress there. We'll talk a little bit that later today as well. But the goal was, how do we nail this down so that as you're starting to think about what the most important items that you want to do as a commission, you're down to um, 33 priorities. And I, I will tell you, from many of the organizations of your size and larger, that's a, that's a realistic number. Uh, even the other number was realistic, but you know, it's, it's got to fit for you as well. So. So what we're going to do today is All just right, kind of, yes, I'm sorry. Interrupt. Yep. I think we may have questions sure. or comments before we move Okay, on. yeah, we can do that before we uh, jump into in case there um, the actual, the next piece is working way through the through the plan. So that's okay. a good natural break. All right, Commissioner McDowell. The only question I have, Mayor, is um, the backup material had this document. This document was sitting on my desk. I want to ensure that both Um. The agenda backup materials had this document that I used to prepare for this morning's meeting, but mm -hmm. sitting on my desk was this document. I want to ensure that they are identical. I have not made any changes. I'll defer to staff from what uh, the last draft we we're working from is the draft they had as part of the agenda packet, correct? And it's, and it's the same. There's, I'm not aware of any changes between what was given to you as the agenda and what was distributed I today. I want to right. make sure. Um, Thank you very okay. much. So it should be the same document. Yep. Thank you. Gotcha. And the goal here today is at the end of the today's process, that we may make some changes or everything else, that's fine. The goal here is we want to kind of capture everything there so you can have a clean final document that you can adopt and move forward. So this is kind of the working draft of the results of the changes that we made forward. We want to make sure you had something in front of you to react to as we're working through this. So with that said, we already adopted pretty much what we have in front of us. It was an earlier version. We adopted it back on May 24th of 22. So uh, it is, was what we adopted in 22 because it was a different version. This is the new version that we're going to adopt for. What was the date again, Commissioner? That it was? May 24th of 2022. Oh, 2022. That, so that would have been a previous, that would have been a previous effort because all this would have been done in 2023. Okay, so yeah. so even so though you they're were, very similar. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and once again, it's an evolutionary process. Typically, as changes are made, you're going to want to reflect those changes and then officially adopt that as your most needed. So if it was in 2022, that was the work that we had done in 2021 and 2022, and then we've gone through some changes. I do not believe. I'll defer to Jerome though. Where have you? You haven't adopted the current plan because I think 
you want to you want to come back to do this as well. Right. We yeah. did not adopt this current plan, and we were reminded that you were <coughs> scheduled to come back and finalize it, which is why it's sort of timely now to finalize it as we go through the budget process. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the only other question that I have related to what we're going to be discussing is the date of this. This says it's from 2022 to 2025. Is this going to change that date to possibly 2026 so that the new commission can work on their strategic plan for the next two years? That That is, um, I, I haven't changed the date to 2026. That's certainly your prerogative. Um, what I found is that I don't think, as I went through this process in my mind and, and retouching the plan for our meeting last fall, I don't think you added new goals and objectives that fundamentally change the trajectory of what you're trying to do. You've refined some language and we've changed some, some items and from priorities to programs <coughs> and that. So I think it still pretty much is reflective of that planning cycle through 2025. At the end of this process, if you want to shift that to go to 2026, that's fine. One of the recommendations we always have, and I know you've got an election this November. November, I believe, so you're going to have potentially a transition in your body. We always suggest after an election that as a new member or members come on the board that you retouch the plan because as they come on board, Phil just went through this last time, he was not part of the previous effort and certainly was engaged in this process and inputted his thoughts and opinions about those items. So we always encourage that after election. So if you want to leave it in 2025, recognizing an election coming up, or if you want to change the date, that's fine. Either way, I'd suggest you come back and redo it once you have a potentially different composition I on your government body. I completely agree gotcha. that the new commissioners need to revisit this and make it theirs. I just was curious about yeah. the date. Yeah, I did not change the date because that was not something that we, you know, as, uh, when we left, that's kind of the, the planning horizon. But if you want to change the date, th many of these goals are long-term goals. And so it, it's totally your call if you want to change that date. Either way, come back and revisit it after a post-election window. Absolutely. City manager, did you have something? He said exactly what I was going okay. to say. Uh, Vice mayor? Yeah. Um, I guess as we go through all up, we're going to go through all the priorities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the refinement of what I would call perpetual versus periodic or project driven priorities we can address. But mm -hmm. one thing that we hadn't discussed in prior sessions, but which sort of reared its head this year and, and really became a pronounced issue, I think, for the commission is while we all understand Pillars are the basic foundation by which we operate and run our city. And within them, there are series of priorities and key indicators. That said, when a city is as dynamic as we are, growing as we are, has the humongous <laughs> needs that our city has, I hope we can talk about what happens when priorities conflict from a budgeting standpoint, we face projects that require resources that regardless of how creative we get and all the resources we bring to bear are going to force a prioritization of the priorities. And there will be what very well may be ranked one, two, and three priorities in certain pillars that there is just no money for, zero money for, mm -hmm. if we move forward in other pillar priorities. And, and that's a real problem. And it's not just a one issue, one project issue. It is multiple. There are, throughout all our pillars, priorities that are essential. Mm -hmm and there are not the financial resources to do them in a timely enough fashion, which is going to require certain priorities and pillars to play second fiddle. That's a concern of mine mm -hmm. in this model because I don't know how we address it and how we adjust for it sure. because it, it seems mm -hmm. to create an imbalance in the pillars. And, and we've all agreed every pillar is equally important, <laughs> but they're not. Yep. They are not. In, in my estimation. Understood. That's the problem. Anyway, it's more of a comment, but as we go through this, I hope. So by very nature, when you get into prioritization, you're into, 
to use a movie analogy, a little bit of Sophie's Choice. <laughs> Which child do I save? What that process looks like? And so um, I'm going to give you a couple options on how you can look at prioritization and might deal with that as well, uh, Commissioner. But there's a recognition, unless uh, I'm going to go on the limb, I'm going to assume that Northport is like most of my cities where you don't have money to do everything you want to do. <laughs> so I don't think that's probably a stretch. You've got to make that decision, and that's a deliberative process you go through every year in the budget effort. And even with, I always say that the prioritization process gives staff and your community an idea to say, in a perfect world, this is the stuff we'd like to get accomplished. But we also know that the world changes and things get shuffled a little bit. And so it is somewhat of a moment in time when you go through a prioritization effort. And it's a lot, I've used the analogy of your strategic vision ought to be like a GPS. You set in a destination, but how many times you drive across and have hit traffic or congestion and they give you alternate routes, you kind of move that. But you haven't changed your destination, but the way in which you get there has changed. And so if you use that kind of as a mindset of your strategic plan and your prioritization, that these are our priorities and these are the highest of those priorities that we'd like to get done. But all of a sudden, you may say, all right, a grant program comes in that allows you to fund your interchanges. Well, that may have been a lower priority, but because of the dynamic change, just like the GPS directed, you're going, if we put our money here, we can accomplish that now, that if we just kept on moving the way we're going, it's going to take us a decade to get there without those additional resources. So there's always some of that element. So I don't want you to get caught up that although you rank them, it does provide time and effort so that your staff can kind of implement the goals and wishes of the, in a scale that you've identified. But it doesn't mean you can't pivot for the right reasons. And there may be things like that that make, make those changes occur. That make, Give you some context there? Absolutely. Thank gotcha, you. gotcha. So I don't want you to feel so trapped that because your plan's there as ever. It also means that you may still be working on those priorities, but they may be longer term. They may take 10 years to accomplish versus shifting it, and we can make this happen in one year. And so you know, you're going to have that pivot. So you haven't given up as a priority. It's just you're doing exactly what we all do around the kitchen table with our own budgets. We have to make adjustments. Are we going out to dinner tonight, or am I going to put that money into something else? Or if I get, you know, if I got an adjustable rate mortgage, I got to pay here. You know where that money is going to go, and I'm not going to do some things that might otherwise be something we'd like to do as a family. Well said. That's that's the point I'm trying to, to context. It is a plan, but it has to live and breathe and adapt based on your your issues as well. God forbid, nobody knew COVID was going to hit. We all changed the world on that one, and every strategic plan had to deal with those issues as well. So. Okay. All right, Commissioner Langdon. Yes. yes. Um, thank you, Mayor. First, I, I want to say I really love the format mm -hmm. of this plan, and I love the juxtaposition of core services. It really, really helps give, um, give me a snapshot of what's really going on. So um, I think in three years, we've made a huge leap in terms of how we're approaching these things. Um, but to piggyback a little bit on what Vice Mayor said, um, some priorities being more of a priority <laughs> than others, um, for me it's always, and my question typically is, how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. So for me, we, we need an emphasis on that. But, but I think in terms of context, it's important for us to realize, and really for the community, to realize that previously we were much more successful, even though we didn't have the structure of this plan, mm -hmm. we were much more successful accomplishing certain kinds of things. And because of that, it sort of exacerbated the situation on which we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we want to place more emphasis on the revenue generating activities, economic development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think it's important for people to realize that it's, it's a little bit of a pendulum. Mm -hmm. Because we've been so successful in um, parks and rec and creating parks, and um, we really offer an awful lot compared to the surrounding communities. Um, but I think in the past, sometimes we did that without really thinking about what it was going to cost to operate and maintain those things. So I just want to say that because should we choose to place greater emphasis on some areas than others, 
It's not that we value those priorities that we might have to push out a little bit more, but, but it's to achieve that balance that we need to achieve, and I think that's important to say. Um, my only other comment or question is just, I always like a little structure in mm -hmm. terms of how we're gonna proceed, so I would ask Mayor and our facilitator, are we, are we do you want questions first, or questions and comments? Will we go, you know, how do you want us to focus moving forward? From my standpoint, I think you've, this is meant to be very interactive. So um, we're gonna, as we work through each of your pillars and work through the priorities and the, the what we've adjusted, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna be looking for feedback as we go through that slide by slide to make sure we either captured it right or there's something, an adjustment that you wanna make or something of that nature. So this is meant to be interactive. So I don't want you to hold off. If, you know, we'll, Each slide will come up, there'll be an opportunity for input on that. That right. make it with your, your consent. That's why I thought it would be a natural progression to questions then. Commissioner McDowell? Yeah, I just I just have a couple comments. Um, I, I appreciate the almost end product. That's okay, being really close. <laughs> almost end product. And I really hope we're going to land this plane today and adopt it so that when the new commission comes on in November, they have something that's tangible so that they can work towards. There's a but. Okay. And, and, and my but is because I have been on the board with previous strategic planning abilities mm -hmm. and, and what we did in the past. Um, I am a firm believer that when you do strategic planning, it is your roadmap, your GPS, um, for what we are going to be doing in the next five years or so, mm -hmm. possibly 10 years for those longer, bigger projects. And what is missing in here is the ability, what I call the ability to celebrate. Yay, okay. we crossed it off, we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that we, in the past, when I pull out the old strategic plans and the old, uh, what, I, what is it, the laminated sheets, <laughs> it, it, the first one, it has check marks on it, mm -hmm. and it has work in progress, and this is a two-year plan. Okay. And, and it celebrated the things that we got done because it was important, it made our plan, we got it done, yay. Some things are still being worked on, some things we went, not doing that. Mm -hmm. I am troubled that this roadmap doesn't include key major projects that we have been talking about in our budget, in our CIP sheets, for three, four years. Okay. Perfect example, the Northport Police Headquarters, the EOC, um, those buildings. Um, water control structures made it in here, mm -hmm. not specific numbers like in, in the past, and that's okay, yep. but at least it made it in there. The one thing that was in there in the draft that we talked about in September was okay. the solid waste transfer station. That's not in here at all. Okay. Um, so... I, I really am looking for a combination of this is what we need to do for our community to fulfill those pillars, but also having those celebratory, hey, we got this done. And, and I think they're both very important to have. So those are my comments. Um, and if, if strategic planning doesn't include some of the big projects that we have been working on, then really, what, what is that message we're sending to the community? Good, good point. Um, and, and any grant writers. I yep. mean, if there's a grant available for a police department and it's not even in our strategic plan, how are we going to get the grant? Right, right. So gotcha. Those are just some examples and, and points that I wanted to get across. It's entirely valid point. I, I understand where you're coming from, Commissioner. Um, I will tell you the one thing that I have learned more as I've transitioned from being an active city manager to a consultant working with local governments is that we never, and I think back in my career, we never took the time to celebrate what we got done. And it's because we got a gazillion other projects to get, okay, wrap that up, we'll move on to the next project to go forward. And one thing that I always recognize now is that if I had to do it all over again, I would take more time to really celebrate those successes because those things, sometimes they just get caught up in the day-to-day -day function and there's so many things coming at you. So I, I appreciate what you're saying exactly uh, from personal as well as an organizational standpoint. And I think I've got an idea that we can help address the point exactly. As we went through, and we'll see as we go, go through the process today, 
we've identified what I call supporting programs and initiatives. Um, and that would be a point where you've got a public safety goal for an exact, a priority of public safety. And a new EOC and a new police station could very well be a significant program initiative, and we can add those in. And so to your point, I think there's an easy way with the structure we've got here that we can make sure that those things get reflected in, our, in your plan that's tangible that you and your community and your organization and in grants, anybody can say, hey, this is an identified area that supports this priority. So I think we can accomplish that. And if there's some of those things we've missed somewhere, today's the day we can make sure we kind of capture that. Thank you. And the other piece then in terms of celebrating success is that one of the recommendations I have for you at the end is that most communities that have a robust strategic planning and a, alignment with their budget typically come back at some point, whether it's quarterly or semi-annual, and they often will have a dashboard on their website to say, hey, it, it, it can be green light, orange light, red light, we're on track, we're close, or we're behind schedule to keep track of that. But then it also is an ability that when you complete the goal, you can say, hey, we hit that milestone, it's done. And where that gets reflected is it gets eliminated in your next strategic plan. But there's an opportunity to kind of track that. Uh, generally, uh, most organizations have a website. And then second of all, uh, when they do their updates to you as elected officials on a quarterly or, or semi, you know, anybody, whatever, whatever window of time you have to do that. So you take that time to step back and say, great job, congratulations. One of the things that we did in the past with previous strategic planning, and Commissioner Emmerich isn't here to support what I'm saying, but we had every six months, the city manager gave us a line by line where we are, what's going on with those identifiable checklist mm -hmm. items. And, and it helped us during our budget as yep. to what we needed to do for our budget because it was a good reminder too to say, oh my gosh, yes, we have to make sure we have money in that because we've got to get that done. Yep. So it, it was a good little reminder and also preparation for when we're doing budget. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is going to get back to what uh, Vice Mayor Stokes has said as well. Um, I always say, you know, step back when I was city manager, tell me what your priorities are and we'll develop a plan to help you get there. But there's times where you need resources to do it. And I've used the analogy in the past. We've all sat in a church where the minister says, I look at your checkbook, I can tell you where your priorities are and where the church may fit into that. <laughs> so what I always say is, if these are the plans or the priorities you've established, and unless something fundamentally has changed, i.e. COVID or something like that has changed those plans, I'm going to develop a budget that helps you accomplish that in a reasonable fashion. And yes, I've got to play a little Sophie's Choice and juggle some things around. But at the end of the day, that's your, your call and where you want to put those dollars. But if ultimately you're setting a strategic priority and a goal, but you're not willing to pay for it, my reaction to you is change the goal or change your budget. Because you can't do them both. Then that's the point I think you're getting at, Commissioner. You've got to be able to say, if this is important to me, I'm willing to invest as much as I reasonably can in the midst of all the balancing interests. But I'm not going to say, I want this done in two years when I realize it's going to take four years to do because I don't have the resources to do it all in a year. So you have to be, you have to be candid with yourself and look yourself in the mirror to say, if these are our priorities, I'm willing to invest as much as I can, but I'm not going to ask for something unrealistic. Because otherwise, your staff's kind of stuck with two hands tied behind their back trying to figure out how to, how to deal with what you want to accomplish. So there's always a little bit of that trade-off. That makes sense? So you're looking at me with a little bit of question mark in your eyes. No, it does. <laughs> It does. Commissioner Six. Langdon. Question yeah, just very comment. quickly. I, I just want to build off what Commissioner McDowell okay. said. I totally agree. We we rarely, well, in this city we do pretty good celebrating, <laughs> but, but I think we need to do more of that. Um, and I had sort of a similar item um, that I wanted to cover, and Commissioner McDowell did touch on it, and that is how frequently, and maybe we do this at the end, but how frequently do we as a body review progress against our key indicators. Um, and I think that's sort of, an, for me, an important part. Um, and I'm kind of a stickler that an indicator should be measurable, and the measurement really does indicate progress. Um, but again, as Commissioner McDowell brought up, there are certain key projects that just accomplishing them, putting a check mark next to them is really 
what the metric is, and and we should have those. And, and very few. There shouldn't be yeah, like there's a few out there that are just we need to do this. Yeah, um, yeah. And you may develop a different indicator going forward after you get it done. But in some case, it's it's getting a plan done or something like that to your check mark comment. Check mark. Absolutely. Right. I'm a big list taker, so I love to be able to cross that stuff off or <laughs> check off as well. I feel like at the end of the day, I've gotten somewhere as opposed to none of it. You know. How going to yes. You, I fully understand along that line. And to your point, yes, we want to talk about that at the end about kind of where you land. Most of the organizations we work with, at least on a semi-annual basis, but many times on a quarterly basis, it's just a report and it's just it doesn't have to be elaborate. Uh, if it's semi-annual, it, tend, it tends to be a little bit, you know, or a little bigger because you're only doing it once a year. Mm -hmm. But if it's quarterly, sometimes it's just a report and with just kind of a snapshot of where you stand so yeah. that there's a reaction and everybody and, understands. And at the very least, when we update the strategic plan, which sounds like it would be every two years, we mm -hmm. should do a thorough review of indicators yeah, before yeah. we go into the next year's plan. And there's still some indicators in there that if in a perfect world I would probably change, but in the same mm -hmm. token, your staff has to be developing those because they have to know what data they've got and um, what makes sense versus what's going to create. You don't want to have your staff so burdened in tracking data that they're not doing the core function. So it's always a bit of a balance there. So, but what I always try, and this is an area that, that I say it takes three to five years to get there, especially in the indicator side, because you get better starting to measure the data. And what you typically find is when a plan is started, it tends to work more effort than outcome. And as it evolves, it tends to be, here's the outcome that I'm actually measuring versus how many site visits or how many things I'm doing, which is a matter of effort. But you've got to walk before you run. So this is kind of an evolutionary process. So there's still some things there that I think I would work on. But that's something your staff has to also work to balance the work that they've got with their abilities and make sure there's good data that's not killing them trying to track it. Yeah, got it. Make sense? Yes. OK. All right. Great. All right. Ready to roll. OK. All right, so um, the first couple slides here are just to kind of bring you back. I want you to get back to, I'm always talking about alignment. So it's going to be vision, mission, values, and then we're going to get into the pillars. So your, your vision statement is an innovative, friendly, engaging, and sustainable community where residents, businesses, and visitors flourish. In previous years, we've made some changes in that. We tightened it up. It's gotten pretty short. I encourage, this is a good, it's something you ought to be able to recite as an elected official. Everywhere your employees ought to be able to recite. I've worked with families that have paragraphs and vision statements, and it just pains me because nobody knows what they're doing, and your employee doesn't know. This is something you can you can capture and remember. So, um, hopefully, that's still that's still on track. Um, the mission statement is really the purpose and the th the way in which you operate, and we've made some changes here to provide exceptional customer services to our entire community for the continuous enrichment of quality of life through transparency, engagement, and respect. So the vision is the why, and the mission is the how <laughs> to do it. And so we've made a couple of those changes that I think is also very tight, and you ought to be able to, to re recall that statement and have your employees be able to recall that statement as well in terms of what they're trying to do and how they're doing it to accomplish your vision. And then um, we encourage organizations, and you had some. We've made some changes over the years in some of your organizational values and tweaked some of the language there. But basically, this is your roadmap to say, um, how you're going to conduct business and the things that you place value on as elected officials and that you expect your staff to place value on in the day-to-day -day functions of their responsibilities. And I say this together. It is, it's not just for staff. Your organization is dependent upon you as the board of directors to live and espouse these values as well because uh, I know economic development is a big part of your, your plan. And your site selectors, your potential investors are looking at you as a body and saying, is this where I want to do business with? <laughs> and are they walking and espousing the values that they have put forth that they expect their employees to do? I will tell you, there are a lot of organizations where commissions and councils say, well, it's staff. And I'm going, no, this is one organization. And you have to act the same way you expect your staff to act. <laughs> <laughs> and espouse those values. So that's a critical element. So I appreciate that. I always want to link the two of those together. And the values that you have are accountability, integrity, customer service, teamwork, empowered employees, diversity, and innovation. I'm not going to read all those. We've gone through those, but we've made a couple of tweaks and adjustments. Uh, but once again, they're all pretty sharp to tight. I don't necessarily expect all your employees to be able to recite each of these. I would expect them to know the, the, the titles of them, though, because 
you want them, whether they're blowing grass after they've cut the lawn off the sidewalk or they're dealing with a customer that's you know, got a complaint about their utility bill or they're coming before you as a city commission asking for something and how you interact that you at least recognize what those are. Some of my organizations actually, when I do governance workshops, will put their values um, on, their, on their decks so that they remember in the heat of the battle, they can look down and see a sheet to say, all right, I, we said we were going to do this, and we're going to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm espousing those values as well. So um, don't want to elaborate on that, but those are, those are things that you've all approved and uh, adjusted over time. So we haven't made any changes in those since the last round, uh, but we did change them when we, when we, every year we've looked at them. We've made a couple tweaks, but we did not do that in September. So um, what I'm going to do next then is work through the pillars, the priorities, what now we call supporting programs and initiatives. And Commissioner, this will be an opportunity as we go through these. If there's a particular project we want to make sure we add, we can do that and capture that as well. And then the snapshot of where we are. We've had to move some of the indicators around because the priorities have moved around a little bit and some have moved into programs. So we've made some adjustments. So they may not look exactly where they were before, but they should be identical to the document that you have in front of you at this stage of the game. So the first area is safe community pillar. And by first, it's not necessarily higher than anything else. It's just the way you've traditionally organized your plan. <coughs> and um, we always encourage you to develop a statement so that people understand what this is all about. So there's a common understanding. So the statement is to create and sustain a safe community for residents, businesses, and visitors of Northport. Um, Commissioner Langland, you mentioned about um, the services and the core services. One of the things that we always try to do and espouse is that, um, and as a city manager, I always try to fight against. Most of the time, people say, hey, I'm in public works, or I'm in the police department, or I'm in the fire department. And I want them to have pride in their department, don't get me wrong. But we tend to internally create silos where our residents, it's just the city. <laughs> they don't care if it's public works or police or fire or parks and rec or utilities or whatever. It's the city. When you hear a complaint, it's the city. And they don't say this department or anything else. So uh, the fact that we try to recognize that by just in your plan to say these are the core services that are involved, realizing there's a lot of players that plug into this area. And it may not necessarily just be police and fire. As you can see, contract and business licensing gets to this element as well. So overarching goal, let's try to break down those pillars, and that's what we try to accomplish. I would highlight that uh, because you had mentioned it earlier, Commissioner, yeah. as well. So all right. So what we're now going to do, and the document you had before, it should be, uh, you'd be able to follow this as well. I've identified the program, or the priority, uh, within each program. And then we have shifted things, uh, the bullet points that show up under programs and initiatives. At one point, used to be a priority. But at our last session, we decided, all right, this is really not a priority, but it's something that supports the priority of having an efficient, effective staffing and level. So you're going to see that. So that's what's going to look different to you from this time, from the last time we met, is we have moved some of those 30-plus those priorities into programs and initiatives. And as I say, if there's things like in this area, Commissioner, that we want to add, this is the point we want to do. So um, we have strived to maintain one of the lowest crime rates as a supporting program or initiative. And then the indicators we have under that, the other piece we've done is we've identified the indicator within each priority or each pillar area because you've got you know, 37 prior, or 37, or nine, I'm sorry, 69 priorities, I believe, you know, 80, 87 priorities. I'm trying to remember which day. Um, it gets hard to track because they're all priority one, prior, or indicator one, two, or three. So what we've done is we've classified them so you can quickly determine what pillar they fit under. So that's going to look a little different from there. So um, you can see that the initiatives there, um, uh, the strive to maintain the lowest crime rate. And then we have a variety of indicators that the staff will be tracking that will support this other program, or this other priority, excuse me. So um, let's see if there's, I believe there may be, yes. Uh, let, let's go through this whole, let's go through the whole pillar area first, and then let's come back to say, are there projects or programs we want to add? That way, because you might, uh, might see something that is better suited under a particular area. So the other uh, supporting program or uh, effort in this was maintain the fire department's insurance office, your ISO. You've got a number one rating. Congratulations. Not a, a lot of cities have that. That's an that's a effort. It saves your, your residents uh, dollars on their insurance rates. Uh, and also uh, providing responsive and efficient fire and emergency medical services. And then you can see the various indicators that your staff has been tracking uh, so that you can determine how you're making progress on that effort. Question there? Uh, Mr. McDowell? No, I'm waiting until I can. You want to add some? <laughs> yeah. 
Gotcha, gotcha, okay. All right. Yeah, same, same, okay. Same thing, okay, all right. So we'll, we'll just kind of work our way through it and then we'll come back if necessary from there then, okay. Some other things that used to be priorities that are now supporting programs or initiatives, are building cohesive community partnerships, leveraging education resources to address critical community concerns, and providing for the safety of our citizens and visitors through effective life safety education and fire inspection programs. And then the indicators that go along with those, you can see annual fire and life safety inspections and uh, achieving compliance. Those are good. Um, and those are good, you, those aren't just efforts. You either hit 100% or you don't. And you can also say, do we hit 95% or not? So those are good indicators to give a sense of, are you achieving your goals to the point that we mentioned earlier, Commissioner? Yep. Another, what used to be a priority is now a supporting program, comprehensive emergency management training programs. And then you can see the indicators there. Once again, strong indicators to determine, are you achieving your goals and objectives um, by specific um, tracks, either the number of training courses done or the percentage or rate of staff that are currently achieved or passing those efforts. And then the second priority in safe communities, uh, ensure the physical security of city assets and operations. And there was a plan to uh, an indicator. This is one that, to your point, uh, Commissioner, this is a project that you would check off. <laughs> Complete the security assessment. You either do or you don't. But once you're done, that's probably not going to be an element. And you may have some other, you know, now you're talking about let's accomplish the first third of those in a certain time period. There's ways to adjust that. So that's, a, that's an example of one of those that you just get done. But it's going to probably lead to some different um, uh, indicator type status work in the future. Or you might even have one that's annual. And so yep. it gets accomplished every year. Uh, yes, yes, you might list it down. You might within that. I suspect, I don't know the nature of your project when I've done these in the past, you're going to have a list of projects and then they're going to probably be prioritized within that plan. I don't know where that is at that point. And so you might want to say, we're going to accomplish these, these in this next year. And the, you, know, you outline kind of a CIP program there as well. So. Uh, but that's, that's a classic. You've got to number these indicators. Because of the infancy of the plan, you've got to do the work first, and then you'll probably change your indicator later. So that's entirely acceptable under these circumstances. Uh, OK, so let's go back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so are there any uh, pro programs, initiatives, or questions? Yeah, let's just yeah. stop there while we're on this topic area. Then. OK. Now? Yeah. Um, so when I was reviewing this, I was thinking that we could possibly put the primary projects, whether they're existing primary projects or we may find something that, yeah, we want to do this, it, you know, five, 10 year plan, <laughs> it's a project that we, and put those primary projects and list them underneath like the title where it says to create and sustain a safe community for the residents and visitors of Northport and then list what those primary projects are. Northport head, uh, PD headquarters, EOC, the, um, the complete security assessment. That way then they're all listed right there so that way then you have your quick little checklist, do your accomplishment, and then in the priorities, you can plug in possibly some key indicators. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of like the rough idea that mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, I don't know what it looks like on paper um, and, and what my fellow commissioners may or may not want to do. But if we do not put in our strategic plan that we want this, and I'm sorry, please, I'm picking on your headquarters, how do we sell it to the community? How do we possibly get these grants? I, I get you. So um, I was thinking of just putting it right underneath. Go back one more slide. Right. Well, I would think probably if you're talking about a police station, for an example, I would think it would fund yeah. under this program and initiative. I was just thinking of a quick visual. These are the projects that are going to support that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe off to the side, not necessarily identifying as a program initiative, just, just, just projects <laughs> yeah. Yeah, off primary to the side. Projects. Similar to like, for an example, like what we've got in core mean, services. Just say, here's your list projects of projects. right underneath okay. this create and sustain a safe community. And, and then list what those primary projects are if they're in the CIP project or we want to create a future CIP project. Okay. That, that's kind of where I was going with we got to figure out 
where are we putting that. these? Okay. Um, okay. The other things, I'm sorry, your first yeah. priority, that's a perpetual priority. Yeah. It's never going to end. Right. right. And that, but that, what, what, what you're saying is it's important that it doesn't end. This is something, I mean, most sometimes, most people say the, the, the most, at its basic level, the core of local government is to provide a safe community. So at, its, at your core, it's something that's your right. It's probably not going to change. How you fund it, how you support it, comes through the types of things you've identified or through the projects, as you've mentioned, uh, that support that, that uh, attainment of that, of that priority. So I'm, I'm open to, you know, let me, uh, I guess I'll defer to Jerome and the, the team here a little bit. I mean, most of these types of major projects you're mentioning, I'm assuming are in a CIP. Is that a fair statement? Or not? Or unless, unless it's being discussed to add to a CIP at some point. Should be in our CIP. Okay. Uh, I can think of one particular item that is not currently in our CIP, in the police station. But okay. Yes, should be in CIP. I understand what you're saying. I, I like okay. the approach. So if we were to develop a system within the document, similar to what we've done, like here on the core services, right. within the body of the document, say, okay, let's identify the CIP projects that support under respective priorities that fall into this arena, we can, we can do it. I mean, that's not too much heavy of a lift to accomplish. But, but at, the, at the same time, I don't want <laughs> some of the projects that are in CIP, um, I, don't, I don't want to lose the importance of the major projects that are in the CIP. Mm -hmm. one, one project that's in CIP, sorry, fire department, yes, it is important, is, is updating their, their Walkie talkie communication yeah, system. Talkies, yeah, right. Okay. It doesn't need to be in our strategic plan. Okay. I'm talking about those big, really big, heavy lift. We call them BAP, big audacious projects. There you go. <laughs> Which Terminal also heart. includes the, the, the security assessment of city uh, mm -hmm. buildings. Okay. That's a big project. We have one coming down the pipe that we just heard about was updating our computer system so that um, that I, city manager help me out with that big computer system that's ERP. hundreds of ERP. 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 That would be one that would need to go in here. So that's the really big ones. I'm not talking about the littler ones. Okay. Because you don't want the big ones to get lost. Right. Okay. So without getting into the weeds of what determines big, some element, you know, some discretion to say these are expensive projects or transformative projects, but not the, the run of the mill capital. What, what's, your, what's your threshold? Is your finance, what's your threshold for capital for projects? Is it like? 50,000. No, just five grand. Oh, so you don't want to go that low. You want to take, yeah, you want to take something that's maybe 200,000 above or something, or you know whatever that number is. I don't know what that, I, don't, I haven't looked at your CAP to know the level of granular detail you've got. In, but if, instead of um, using a dollar threshold as the limit, I would say the impact that it sort of provides to the pillar or what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so, so maybe a smaller dollar amount, but it might have a significant impact is what you're saying. Does that make sense, Commissioner? Okay, so it's really, there's going to be a little bit of fuzziness there. Your staff's going to have to kind of figure that out about where we think that impact will be. But does that make sense? Okay. So uh, focus on impact then. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I guess let's talk while we're on that point because you mentioned one of the things that's not in your CIP, but it's been mentioned a couple times here today is a new police station. So how do you want to deal with that? Let me ask that question. Do you want to do you want to put that on, even though because it may very well you're kind of a unique window. You're right before your budgeting process. So you're likely to be adopting a CIP, and I suspect it may be advanced as part of the budgeting effort. But if there's a project that's not currently in your CIP as it relates to this plan, because this is a snapshot in time, would you like staff to include that as a proposal, or do you want to leave that off the table and then deal with that in your next plan? How do you want to address that? Police departments in the CIP projects. It is, okay, it is okay. It is. The new station is okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought I heard that it was not okay. Are there any other drone? I'm put you back in the spot. Are there any other projects that aren't that that are being discussed now that are likely to be part of your plan that aren't in your CIP presently that we should be incorporating into this? Well, there are projects that we're discussing, but I don't know if they're ready to go on to this plan yet. Okay. Uh, we can do it either way. We can take the project that we have, and we can see their values or their impacts and sort of put them in this plan if you want to not sort of adopt this plan today, or we can do it <clears throat> going forward. But it's a good idea either way. 
So there's, there's another way that, because this is, as I say, we're in a unique window because you're kind of right before your budgeting window. You could take and put all the plant, all the transformative, impactful projects under each of these pillars that are in your CIP. And then if there's effort that it's like very confident that you're going to be considering this as CIP, you can always put an asterisk by it or something, and we can just code it, say, proposed or something like that. That way you don't lose the insight. But I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm the Swiss when it relates to which way you want to do it. I just want the projects in the CIP for grant writing and communicating to our citizens how important this is. OK. If, that, if that's the case, and you want to make sure there's something in your document but it may not be in your CIP, I would suggest you probably put a proposed on, yeah, I put your proposed projects in there as well, um, because you're, you're going to be adopting this document before you adopt your budget. And so until you revisit your plan next year, right. you're going to lose that window of time where if you wanted to say, hey, this is part of our strategic plan, I can point to this, even if it was proposed, I would suggest if that's the outcome that you're trying to accomplish to include those. Whichever projects are considered impactful. Right, okay. I, I consider the police headquarters and EOC and security of the city to be impactful projects, just like the um, technology one that's right. coming down the pipeline, to be impactful. But the communication system, <clears throat> it's impactful, but not strategic planning. Okay. I don't know how you separate that. And, we can, uh, does that make sense um, to, to do even just kind of the magic asterisk approach? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't want to add, <laughs> I want to make sure. Post <clears throat> projects. Okay. All right. So, assuming we're going to use the CIP as the base model with whatever other things might be coming into play, are there any other projects you can think of within this pillar, safe communities, that you want to make sure get? Um, Captured here. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, successful implementation of our permitting automation system. I don't know where we're at with that. Um, can Would I go that back be to the safe community? Or? Well, um, I, I, think I was it's going back and forth in terms of where to put it. I don't want to dictate where to put it, but under safe community, we do have permitting plans, mm -hmm. review inspections. Yeah. So I'm, I'm talking about it here. I don't care where it goes. I, I think, so you're talking about kind of the That's fast track of building. There is one in your, your economic development, I believe, plan that gets more directly to the plans review. Now, if it's dealing with life safety, you know, I, technically it's all life safety. I understand the dynamic there. Right. But I know we have some things in your economic development area. So we're yeah, just that, put that in a parking spot for now? Yeah, that's where I was going back and forth because okay. I did have a metric suggestion. Yeah reduce time to like currently on average how long does it take someone to get a permit and, and what's our goal for how long it should take okay uh, and again i don't care where it goes but i think having the successful implementation of um permit the permitting process is one of those really essential check mark projects Sweeter. It has such big implications for our efficiency and our level of service for the residents and businesses. Okay. Yes. If you're okay with that, what I'll do is I'll capture this kind of in the parking lot, and as we go through that, we can make a decision whether it fits here or fits under there. Make right. sense? I want to make sure we don't I lose really, your, I don't lose care your thought. Where it goes. Okay. Um, my only that I'm not usually. Whoop. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not usually the commission editor, but I, I just want to point out indicator 1.1. It should be a safe place to live. Um, can we bring the slide back up? Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, which I'm one? Not usually. Which, uh, uh, which, which indicator? What number? Uh, one, the first 1. one. 1.1. One. Yeah. The third the one. The priority one. Priority one. The priority one, indicator one. Indicator 1.1. Yes, I'm sorry, what are you asking? What are you? We, we add the word safe before place. As a safe place to live. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. SC1. SC. And then I, I do want to suggest a second indicator under priority two for consideration. I don't want to beat it to death today, but for staff to consider and for my fellow commissioners to consider. Um, I think we should conduct annual active shooter training for the commission and our employees. 
Now maybe we can just make that a little more general emergency training. We may have that already. I'm not familiar with it, but the shooter. I haven't had active shooter training as a commission for years. No, we had one during my tenure. So yeah, but it's been past. a few years. So I don't yeah. think either one of them have had it. Something. Water. Okay. Okay. So that's a proposed new indicator. Indicator. So it would be 2.2 if we choose to add it. And that would probably be, I'm sorry, going back and forth on the slides again. Um, Under priority two. Yeah. Security assessment. Okay. So probably 2.2. Okay. Um, and sort of related to that, I don't know if we have defibrillators here at City Hall and people. Right over. Okay. Okay, good. And people trained to use them and to indicate. Okay, perfect. Okay. perfect. The, before we leave the CIP conversation there mm -hmm. on the police headquarters, like in this example, when we put it on this list, it's unfunded. Like we had money in there for the land, which was used for the land. Mm -hmm. So I think that it needs to be clear that it's an unfunded project for this one. Normally, projects of that size, you could see the funding pattern for it, but this one is an unfunded CIP project. So it's in the CIP as a project, but there's no dollars allocated to it? The dollars that were there? Were just for land acquisition. Land. Yes. Okay, so first phase of a project. Correct. Okay, funded versus unfunded. Okay. Because when I think of CIP, I think of something that has funding sources identified. Right. So in other words, you have a project called the police station, but the only thing in your CIP is the purchase of land for it. That is correct. Okay, gotcha. And then one other. And I, I guess let, let me go back to that point. So what I'm, what I think I'm hearing you say, Commissioner, but correct me if I'm wrong, is you're not looking for all the details of the numbers because you've got a CIP that'll have that. that all you're looking for is a listing of the projects of that the are projects. there that support that priority within this pillar, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, Commissioner. <laughs> and then um, indicator 1.10. It's conduct 15 emergency management training courses during 2022. Oh, yep. We should probably update that. Number. That should probably just be annually, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Instead of that. Yeah, good point. Good catch. All right. So let's see. Let's see. 1.10 change. Turn. Two o two two. Okay. That's why lots of eyes will make a difference on these documents. Because <laughs> I assume you've done that by twenty twenty two at this point. <laughs> All right. That's it for me, Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to piggyback off something that Commissioner um, Langdon had brought up about the defibrillators. While staff may be trained. I may be in the hallway by myself with a citizen that is having an episode. I'm not trained on it. Okay. And, you know, I, I understand that there are far more staff than there are commissioners, but I, I really think that that, just, that kind of training would be important for us to have. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing it out there since you brought it up because there are times where each of us are in a hallway or even in our own meeting with a citizen and mm -hmm. they may have an episode. We know where to grab it. We know how to do it because by the time I have to call for somebody to help me, that person, you know. So what? I'm just I'm just throwing it out there for gotcha. consideration. It doesn't need to make it. I just wanted to okay. piggyback off some to commissioner's said. point. We should at least know where are the defibrillators and who are the people. And is there only one in the whole building? We should think about that. So I would assume there's multiple, oh, but so, um, oh, I think if you're okay, we'll make it broader than just active shooting. That way, we can kind of capture that, and and we'll situation. figure out the appropriate language there. So okay, just we throw it out there. <laughs> details coming. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mayor. If I may, Juliana Belia, Assistant City Manager. So we have defibrillators on every single floor throughout the building. We have some staff that has first aid training, mm -hmm. okay? 
But the objective is if we get the for first, the first thing you do is you call 911. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did have an episode here at the time. We were very fortunate to have an employee that had the proper training to use the defibrillator. Um, it is very involved. So every single employee does not have the training. Uh, we have talked to the fire department. They are going to bring the first aid training back. Uh, it's very intense. Mm -hmm. It's it's a specialty training, mm -hmm. and you have to have a special demeanor because if you're dealing with somebody that's having an episode such as a heart attack or something like that. So the bottom line is we have them here, but the first priority is to always call 911. But I agree. Everyone should know where the defibrillators are. We do have a program now. Uh, Mr. Speak uh, has ensured with our facilities uh, maintenance division. Mm -hmm. They're annually inspected in uh, conjunction with our fire department to make right. sure that they're all in proper working order and that they're all up to date and they okay. have the necessary pads. Because we did, unfortunately, a couple years ago, have a very, very scary situation. I remember and that. we're fortunate enough to have um, a former police officer that had the experience. Because if you really don't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, you may not be helping at all. So I just wanted to let everybody know that we do have a system here at the city. Thank you. I, okay. I think Appreciate most that. of these, the ones that I remember when they first came out, they were the, most of these were designed really for the novice to say mm -hmm. they walk you through. There's either a verbal or there's some yeah. process that explains yeah. what to do and how yeah. to do it. Yeah. But I realize you know time minutes are, are important in these matters, yeah. and so I think what you're getting at, I, th I think we can capture something though in that arena just to say here's an opportunity to receive the appropriate training. I just wanted to piggyback off it. Yep. Yep. No. no I, when I, I you, see staff training, I sit there and go, well. What, we're not special enough to get that training. <laughs> and we're very involved with what's happening. So. Understandably. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, if you're good with that, we can make a broad statement about mm -hmm. providing that access of training okay. uh, so that uh, we can we can capture it, and then we'll make the change in the uh, 2022. Were there any other changes? I keep dropping my, my uh, remote here. Uh, were there any other changes in, um, in the safe community and priorities that we wanted to capture today? Okay. All right. Next area, quality of life pillar. Promote Northport's community wellness, its natural resources, recreational assets, cultural diversity, ethnic and historical heritage. With the core services identified to the right. All right. Um, first priority, culture, music, entertainment, public gathering opportunities, tournaments, recreational offers, all that promoting the natural character and the identity of the neighborhoods, it's a pretty broad priority. <laughs> Lots of stuff in there, but obviously, uh, you know, it's a it's a direction of what you're trying to get. I think collectively, it's a sense of place. Um, you know, a place that you call home is what you're trying to capture in that priority. And then, um, what used to be a priority is now identified as a program or initiative. Develop strategic partnership and programs. Educate residents, residents and visitors about the heritage, historic buildings, archives, and unique environmental assets. And then the, the indicators under this priority, um, the planner, uh, is that that's another one that is you to do or don't, right? I mean, it's not, it really is, it's a goal and an effort, but once it's done, it would cease to be an indicator, but it's certainly captured there as recognizing. And I'm going to go back to your point, Mr. Stokes, that um, if this is one where you say, all right, we want this as an indicator, this is one I would anticipate you'd be funding in your budget. Because if you're not, then your, your, your priorities and your budget aren't the same. So I'm going to bring that point home. That sometimes you get to this type of, of granular specificity, one would anticipate that as Jerome's preparing the budget, that that would have been incorporated. Now, I don't know where you are in that. That was in FY24. So I don't know if that's been done yet or not at this stage. If I may, Mayor? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I believe we took that out. We took that. We just had a discussion recently about a cultural, historic, type of a position and we we decided not to move forward with it. And I don't know if this is the same as that discussion, but it sure sounds like it's similar. Well, I'm not sure it's the same, ma'am, because when it says a planner, that's, that was a little different than what we had, but now I don't see it. I think it was yeah, I circled it as well, but I also made a little note. I didn't really want to debate it here, but maybe during budget. Yeah, we'll we'll get you an answer on that. It sounds yeah. very familiar to it, but I don't think it's the same thing. And I think maybe we can take off fiscal year 2024 because that's obviously not happened. We're, we're halfway through the year. It didn't even make it in the budget. 
All right, so we've got to define if this is the same planner position. <laughs> And Work and environmental planner, environmental change. Two o two four. Okay. All right. So staff, we're going to have to figure that out. And if it's still there, it's different. We'll leave it. If not, we'll have to maybe define it differently so that there's not a confusion. And we'll get your answer pretty soon. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, to that point, if if something if that comes off the list, then we're just going to renumber things accordingly from there. Okay. Makes sense. All right. All right. Next one, historic environmental resource planner. After hiring the historic resource planner. Yeah. Um, and then developing a plan. So is that still very much in play, the, the, the preservation plan? Or it depends on whether you're hiring the planner, I guess. So OK, so 1.1 one and 1.2 1. 1 and 1. may go away or may not, depending on. Okay. Okay. Um, what used to be a priority is now supporting program, multimodal connectivity, about your community. And then you've got, I keep hitting that, sorry. Um, I, I had a, excuse me, oh, yeah, Madam Mayor, sorry. I, yeah. I had a few more comments relative to the previous, that sort of historical, okay. et cetera, et cetera. And um, I think some of them might be too detailed, but I'll just sort of throw them out for us to right. consider. Um, I think some preliminary work we might consider prior to hiring someone is to, number one, reconvene that advisory board. Right now, it's I think we're in the process of doing that. But um, once it's accomplished, it could be something we celebrate. Um, what, second, is the, what is the board, Commissioner? It's the Historical and, cultural. and Cultural Advisory Board. CAB. Cultural. Um, another thing that I'd like us to consider that would be a net new initiative would be um, obtain funding for an archaeological slash historical museum, not for the city's budget, but I think that with, uh, I've had a number of requests for that. We had students from the Lamarck School, I think, who had requested a children's museum. I think there's some interest in something like that. Um, and I personally think that would be an incredible community project for the community to really drive with the city's support. Archaeological, what else did you refer to uh, it as? Historical. And you know, historical. We might kind of combine and Historical those. museum. Um, just another thought, and again, this is this is probably too detailed for a strategic plan, um, but we've had some conversations recently about the fact that we've lost some very involved long-term residents of the city, and, and we did not capture their oral histories. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of conversation at one of our commission meetings about getting volunteers, perhaps, or commissioners to you know, interview some of our older long-term residents to try to flesh out our history. Again, I'm just throwing these out as ideas. They're probably too too detailed for this. Do um, you, do you, um, Stormport run its museum, or it run its library, or is it run through the county here? Oh, yeah. okay. It's run through the county. Sometimes what you'll see is local historical rooms in mm -hmm. libraries mm -hmm. where some of that type of material is captured and there's a, a you know, there's an existing resources yeah. to kind and of develop. And you're providing that. the perfect segue to oh. my last two comments. Okay. Well, before we lose that then, so <laughs> what I think I heard you say is you're not looking to run it, but to help try to fund it in some fashion it, or yes. support. So it's really a, finance, a support of developing that, not necessarily doing it as a, as a city service. I think I heard Correct. you say that, yes. right? Okay. I think it's the perfect community project. Okay. Um, but two other thoughts. Can't, can't we better leverage the county archaeologist? Steve Koslow? Koski. Uh, Koski. I mean, we have that resource at the county level. Um, and related to that, there is an archaeological group that meets regularly about 
warm mineral springs, but perhaps even more so Little Salt Springs is a community group. I think they're regional. Um, I, I think those two resources could be extremely helpful in helping us achieve something like this. So I just want to throw that out for consideration. So talk, talk through that again with me. Explain or give me a statement that I can, I can capture. County resources that could, if, if we decide we do want to pursue in some way an archaeological or historical museum, might we leverage the county's um, archaeologist in that effort? AKA, maybe the county could help us achieve this. Um, and related to that, there is a, an archaeological committee that I believe is regional. It's a, I think you're talking about the nonprofit. It's Little the Salt Springs Spring. and Warm Middle Springs Spring. Archaeological Society. Society. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. Exactly right. Okay. You know a lot more than me. <laughs> I know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> it's okay. a nonprofit organization. Are you, Commissioner, are you suggesting that those might be programs or initiatives, not necessarily a priority? But identify them kind of as a. I think these are resources that can help us achieve the, this particular. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let me rephrase it. So, yeah. all right. So we got two things. Let's. I know they're all related, but I want to make sure before we ask something that there's right. that people are on board. So the first item was to reconvene the historical and cultural advisory board. Yes. Is there a consensus in the board to, to do that? It's in the works. It's going to be done probably in the next couple months. Okay. All right, so we'll just add that. Check it off. Just, well, <laughs> we'll add it and then you can check it off. <laughs> as I said, we're trying to get you a plan that makes right. sense. You haven't done it as of today, so let's put that as a program or initiative, right? Okay. Yeah. And then supporting, I've got to figure out the language of this, but basically trying to support efforts to establish some sort of archaeological and historical museum, not as a city program. But and, and working with county and you know we'll figure out a way to word it, but I think that's what you're getting at. Yes. Also, as kind of a program initiative, not necessarily priority. Correct. Correct. Yes. At all. Everybody on board with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Next item under quality of life priorities. Talk about multimodal connectivities. Mobility fee. Um, this is when we do have 2025 and pedestrian experience designing and filling gaps commencing in 2025. Does that still make sense to lead that 2025? It's an ongoing thing, okay. it's a perpetual thing. It sounded like there were some efforts to track that starting in 2025. Do we we pull just say uh, and I don't know, I'm asking staff, where are you at in that? Do we, we refine the quality of life indicator to say, um, you know, we're going to complete so many sections? Or uh, I, don't know, I don't know where you are in that plan. <laughs> if, if I may, city manager, um, a question, uh, excuse me, mayor, I have a question for city manager. Um, is this indicator the same thing as our neighborhood connectivity plan? I'm assuming it is. You know, building bridges over the indicator 1.3, begin implementation of multimodal connectivity plan. Oh, good, 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 good. There it is. OK, thank you. I've never heard it called that. Yeah, I've got it. Perfect. So I guess, as I said, recognizing when this was put together, it was mm -hmm. not where we are today. Can you, where are we at on the, um, but that's the, uh, the sidewalk network. I'm just, have you done a master plan of your gaps or not, or is that still that? So the, the plan's been, been done. Yes, but I don't know the implementation it's done time. Every year. Well, I'm just saying we might want to change the indicator because if the plan's been done, maybe now it's a question of the implementation um, because it looks like. Um, I don't think we went to design. I think we discussed and approved a plan. I don't recall, but. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaks yeah. is. Right. Thank you for being here. Staff just thought they were to hang out in the back there. They're going to get called upon from time to time here. Uh, I was trying to Public Works Director. Uh, the Commission has approved a mobility transportation plan, uh, which we have started to implement through our first one will be the Cosmic Waterway Bridge crossing. So we're moving down that trail. 
okay. as well as trying to switch transportation impact fees over to mobility fees. So do you have a plan that identifies like a priority of your list? Uh, you know, where, where you mentioned you're starting in this one area. Uh, is, that, is that articulated in your plan? We have a citywide plan that shows every okay. All improvement right. through the next 30 years or so. Okay, so you've outlined a certain amount of dollars and juggled that into prior, or, or, you know, expected costs. As we transition to mobility fees, we'll be able to do that. Okay, all right, so it's being funded by the mobility fees, okay. So no designs are in place yet, or do we have designs? So we have the design for the plan, say a master plan, if you right. want to call it that, for right. the, the mobility and connectivity through the city. Uh, the Cosmic Waterway Bridge right now is, is we're working on design for that, and we've purchased properties to... Okay, so there's funding and things are moving forward. Yes. Okay, I kind of lost track. Yes, um, and we can use okay. transportation impact fees for a portion of those mobility improvements, um, but some of those will have to wait because of the, the restrictions on that transportation impact fee versus the mobility. Yes, go ahead. We already have a sidewalk plan that identifies all the gaps, correct? Correct. Because we're working on that every year. We just got done doing San Mateo. I think it was last year. Correct. Was it San Mateo or was it? Anyways, each year we do a little segment mm -hmm. that does that connectivity mm -hmm. and fills in those gaps. Okay. So that that, um, that indicator, indicator is, is, is not a fiscal year 2025. It's a perpetual it's ongoing, thing right. that goes on based on funding. Okay, so we've got to revise to reflect the implementation of the plan. Sidewalk plan, okay. Okay, all right. So that fiscal year 2025 just needs yeah, I'm, I'm to revise. Yeah, I'm, re I'm suggesting we revise it all together based on when this was done, it doesn't sound like we didn't have the plan in place. Now you have the plan, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have to revise the, revise the indicator. Okay. Okay. Here. okay. All right. Um, Parks and Recreation, diverse high quality parks, natural spaces. The indicators are tracking things. I suspect you're tracking all this as part of your, your nationally accredited group, so I suspect these items are all things that you're tracking as part of that accreditation levels. All continue to make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I have some questions on sure. this, Mayor, yep. if I may. I'm a little confused between the first two indicators. Mm -hmm. 2.1 and 2.2. I don't see anyone here from Parks. I'm hoping someone can clarify that for me. And a related question. I think in our comprehensive plan, don't we call for three acres per 1,000? What's the number in our comprehensive plan? Yep. Ask and you shall receive, right? <laughs> Mysteriously, staff appears. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. I just realized I forgot to turn my phone on silent, so if you hear Kenny Chesney from the back of the room, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, cor correct. Um, and we are looking now at how our parks are in open space is classified, our recreational space is classified, um, and we'll be discussing some potential changes to that uh, with the commission uh, with the comprehensive plan amendments coming. Right, because I did a little math this morning before my first cup of coffee, which is extremely That's dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> but I did a little math around the eight acres of property per 1,000 residents, and I came up with when everything is said and done, then this city would have 3.125 square miles of parks. If that number is accurate, I'd love to have that as a metric. I'd like to know where we're at. And, and, and there's there's some overlap between 
what the city has as parks and what we have as conservation. So, yeah. you know, we have conservation er, that we consider conservation, not necessarily under conservation easements, but the intent right. in our comprehensive plan and for that land is, is conservation. Mm -hmm. However, there are some low intensity recreational uses in those areas. Right. So, uh, which, which is fine, you know, trails and things like that. Um, so the, there's some overlap. When you look at conservation and recreation open space, we're at something like 34% of our total land area. Um, I've been using 29, so mm -hmm. it's more like 34. Right. Um, so we're, we're trying to tease that out to, to make it a little more clear um, right. as to what those percentages are. Parks Director. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Sandy Von Heller, Parks and Recreation Director. So um, currently the comp plan has a level of service target of three acres of parkland, which is one and a half acres of community park and one and a half acres of open space per 1,000 residents and seven acres of conservation land for 1,000 residents. We are, that's what we have in the plan. We're currently at a level of a service of eight acres of parkland for 1,000 residents. Oh, wait a minute. Could, could you back up? I want to take this sure. down. I'm sorry. So currently the comp plan level of service is three acres of parkland, which is made up of 1.5 acres of community park and 1.5 acres of open space per 1,000 residents and seven acres of conservation land per 1,000 residents. Okay. That's what's in the plan, but what we are currently um, at and we'd like to maintain is the level of service of eight acres of parkland per 1,000 residents. Okay, so that eight acres. And how is that different from 2.1? I'm still a little muddled on. Uh, can you go back to the screen? Um, or I'm sorry, back to the um, document? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's what she's referring to. So, so 2.1 is improved property. Mm -hmm. That's the difference there. And then 2.2 um, is acres of property that's designated for parks. So is that a future um, metric? No, it's just the difference between improved property and then property in total. So open space would be which? Uh, it. It depends. <laughs> it could be it might either be conservation <laughs> or it might be park. It, o open space would typically be passive recreation, but not necessarily conservation. Open space could be lawn or um, just natural areas that aren't. Um, I'm trying to think some some, some wetlands, of the areas. We, in, we count wetlands in our open mm -hmm. space. We do. Yes. We do. So it, it's not necessarily conservation, but it could be. There, okay. that, that's why I said earlier there's some overlap, and we're trying right. to tease that out. Right. Right. So um, so my, my one suggestion is if someone could verify the math of how many square miles or acres of parkland and then sort of track where are we at against that goal? How much further do we have to go? Because um, these are good. They're a good start. But, but it doesn't, for me, it doesn't give me enough information to evaluate progress against a goal. Um, and then my other comment is um, I think we need to start identifying areas or not specific properties, but just sort of strategically areas for land acquisition for parks east of Toledo Blade. I know I've harped on this a little bit, but I, I just see us doing a lot, making a lot of investments west of Toledo Blade, and I'm just becoming very concerned because things are happening so quickly out east. I don't want us to get behind the eight ball. Sure. So we are actually of, working on a park Toledo system Blade map. Boulevard. We are working on a park system map, and that was Beautiful. based on a conversation that we had that you Beautiful. had brought forward. Yeah. Um, and so we hope to have that to show you um, where current parks are now and yeah. what areas they service walkability-wise, and then where we have those gaps 
to say we need something in this area. In this area, right. And I don't want to be tipping property owners off that we're interested in their parcel, <laughs> but just sort of strategically where we think we need to, to have them. In Thank many you. cases, and I'm assuming you do it here like many of the other communities in Florida, what you'll do is so you know is if you've got residential development occurring in a certain general quadrant of the city, mm -hmm. but you don't have your parkland there, right. staff would generally identify that based upon the number of houses and rooftops and what that looks right. like, we're going to need X number, either a regional park, a local park, or a combination. Exactly. So normally what they do is identify we're going to need X number of acreage, and then normally what happens is as those developments occur, sometimes you buy property ahead of time and get ahead of mm -hmm. the game. Other times, as that development occur, you can work with your developers, say, listen, we're going to give you impact fee credits if you give us X number of parcels for this that's to go sort of forward. Where, so that's yeah, kind of how that yeah. process generally yeah. works. I'm assuming that's yeah. how you're doing and, it here. And, so and I see this as being in, integrally, I always have trouble with that word, <laughs> integrally related to the master plan for Activity Center 6 and the whole, you know, east of Toledo Blade area because it's huge, but things are starting to move really fast, I think. Great, thank you so much. That's all my stuff. Okay. Mr. McDowell, did you have something on that? Yeah, um, relating to the park out east. It <laughs> don't, used, don't go yet. <laughs> it used to be in the strategic plan, and going back to my initial thought of having the primary projects mm -hmm. that we have in our CIP, mm -hmm. it is in our CIP, and that would be listed under one of those primary projects, right. along with Warm Middle Springs and the mobility fees that we're working on, the mobility fees uh, implementation, mm -hmm. um, the connectivity implementation. Those, just off mm, what I was reviewing, those were some of those primary projects that I was talking about that mm -hmm. would fit under that quality of life. Gotcha. And I'm going to go on the, uh, we'll, we'll do this universally, but I want to go on Lynn. The types of things you're mentioning are in your CIP presently, correct? Okay. All right. Primary projects. Okay. But to a Commissioner um, Langdon's point, there was a list of starting the out east community center that for some reason has not made it to this strategic plan that's being presented and talked about today. Yes, community center. Okay. That may be one of those magic asterisks that we put. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, oh, just, oh, I have sorry. one more. Yep. Go ahead. Boca Chica. Pardon? Boca Chica Park. Okay. That would probably also be on our project prior, uh, project um, list is Boca Chica Park. It's in the implementation. It is a CIP project. Okay. Okay. All right. And I have one other. Um, indicator 3.2. Back to the slide um, again. So experience an overall cost recovery goal of 20%. Uh -huh. I would really much rather see those assets that are fee-based be monitored separately. We really don't expect a ball field to contribute anything financially mm -hmm. to the well, Maybe. City. Do you, you charge your leaks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you charge your leaks for the use yeah. of the fields? Yeah, there's yes, some so revenue. They yeah. Do generate yeah, revenue. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they generally, parks and rec rarely are 100% supported, but there are certain elements like golf right. courses that right. sometimes are trying to set up as enterprise funds, things like that. But right. like swimming pools rarely are going to be fully supported. Right. So, well, again, I'd still like to see the, the those assets, um, the two community centers, um, and the aquatic center broken out separately. Um, because I, I think our plans are to have a much higher cost recovery for those assets than we would plan to have for parks in general. So the I just think combining them kind of masks how we're doing. I think part of that's going to be a discussion with finance, if that's possible, because it's not tracked that way now for right. recreation. The aquatic center is currently tracked that way. Right. All the expenses are in that budget. Right. Um, the purpose of that indicator was to show that overall, as a department, there is a cost recovery, even for yeah. the things we do that are mm -hmm. um, free to the community. Um, and as you said, the fields, we do get um, a revenue stream from the rental of the fields. 
as of the last quarter, I believe our cost recovery overall minus the free programs was at about 28%. So I thought I had heard once upon a time that the community centers in particular were on a 50% recovery. I might be way off base on that, but I thought I had heard that at one point. So I just, again, I just think that those assets um, that were significant financial investments, both from a building and maintenance point of view should be, I'd like to see them separate, but others may not. And that may be, remember, on your strategic vision plan, this is your overall stuff. When you look at your budgets, I don't know how you're structured your budget. Many times you have performance indicators and programs within your budget mm -hmm. that may not be part of your strategic plan that might say your aquatic center, for example. Is that, is that set up as an enterprise function? It's not. Okay. So it's still under the assets, but you're tracking it. So there may be, sometimes you'll see like golf courses and things like that where you can show your revenue. So you've got an idea of if there's a general fund subsidy, you get some idea of what that looks like. And I think that's what you're asking for. So whether it fits here or maybe fits into your budget documents as you're doing it, that may be something. But right. as they say, finance has to be able to capture those things. Because, right. for example, the Aquatic Center is a $500,000, $600,000 hit annually to the general fund. That's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. So I think the number is... And I would suspect for the community centers, although not quite that dramatic, mm -hmm. you know, a sort of their their high intensity investments. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it for me. Anything else on quality of life? This one. This is lands. Um, where you are with regards to your, your desire for a hospital. I think you've got some development going, as I recall, correct? Two hospitals, that's right. I remember some <laughs> conversation actually. about that. Yeah, <laughs> actually three. Place as well. Three now? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I thought it was two in the last time. So maybe, health, oh, right? behavioral health. Oh, behavioral health, okay. Right. All right, not, not uh, tertiary care, okay. All right, How we, do we need a, need a bathroom biological break? We've been going for a little bit. I'm a camera. Anybody a chance? I don't know. Yeah. It's up to you. <laughs> what do you want? Five you minutes. Five minutes? Sure. Take a five minute break? Okay. okay. You got yeah, it. Because maybe our facilitator needs one, and that was his. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, <laughs> okay. I've learned that i got to pace my coffee. <laughs> so. All right, five minutes. All right, so it's 10 55. We'll come back.
Okay. Are we ready? Okay. All right, we're going to reconvene. It's 10.55. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What's the matter? Um, oh, yeah, I guess I'm we are. I'm a facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look out there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Okay. We'll give it a minute. So not yet, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. We're kind of easy going with this, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, Doug, we're waiting for you. <laughs> no more coffee for you. <coughs> Julie's got me set with my Diet Coke, so I'm in good shape again. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All yeah. right. Okay. Next category we're moving into is economic development and growth management pillar. Promoting sustainable growth, investment, development, to achieve vibrant, diversified economy of services and local employment opportunities. Your core services identified to the right. Hi, right, first priority, workforce development programs, working with federal, state, local, and not-for-profit partners to influence the workforce, workforce pipeline supply, getting back to changing the dynamics, changing the employment opportunities, and trying to add more primary jobs. So um, the first became more a program as opposed to a priority. Any comments about any of the indicators there? They all still make sense? Can I? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you the, can go. The first indicator, 1.1, it says to decrease the out-of-city workforce commuter rate by 5% by 2025. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if having years and, and deadlines in here are realistic goals. Okay. I, they may be, they may not be. I'm just sharing, you know, that's next year. <laughs> mm -hmm. 2025 actually starts October 1st. Mm -hmm. um, if we're going by fiscal year 2025, I don't know. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. All right. As I said, that was that was what where we landed. But we'll, yeah. this is I your just, document. You gotta just, you gotta feel comfortable with it. Yeah. So if you want to yeah, change that, I, I you can change a, that. I have a couple of sure. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, yeah. do you want you want to talk about that first, or, or is that I'm sorry, it, Commissioner? It's related to that. I, okay. Um, my only concern, this kind of stuff can be just so difficult to measure, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm just concerned now. Hopefully, staff has figured out a way to do it. Um, I, so decreasing the out of the city workforce commuter rate, definitely a, a top, top priority. I, I just don't know how we measure it. Yeah, if it's it. easier to measure net new jobs um, or something, I just wanted to throw that out as a concern. This measurement, I don't believe, this measurement, I don't believe is done by staff. I believe it was done by Kamoi in a third party study, but. Yeah, we certainly don't want right. to have to pay a consultant every year to <laughs> measure our metrics. So uh, when Kamoin did the study, they also showed staff that was here at the time how to do it. And fortunately, that staff is still here. But mm -hmm. typically, this type of data is gathered from census mm -hmm. information. And so we are dependent upon um, the census to get that information for us. And that type of survey is not done every year. Right. So it's it's not a yearly update that we are able to calculate. It's going to be more on a five or 10 year update. We can get some of the information from the American Community Survey, but some of it is going to be the, um, the 10 year census that's done. Okay. Um, so I would agree that having an, an update by 2025 is probably not mm -hmm even feasible. Right. Um, I think it's something that we will be tracking on a five-year basis. Uh, we'll track it as the American Community Survey comes out and, and as the 10-year um, overall census comes out. Um, and, I, and I think the important thing is that we see a downward trend, not necessarily that Hitting a, a specific target is going to be very difficult um, and may set unrealistic expectations. Um, but if we can start to track a, down, a 
a consistent downward trend, I think that tells us that we're going in the right direction. direction. Yeah, and I'd we may have times where that downward trend really drops off because of new companies that come in and mm -hmm. start up. We may have several in a year that do that, whereas one year it may level back off and then go down again. So I think it's the trend. It, that we want to it would be interesting to sort of see the decrease in that commuter rate juxtaposed with the number of new jobs and sort of see and where they We also pass. have to keep in mind that that, that mm -hmm. That increase in new jobs is tied to some other things. For instance, getting utilities into our areas of the city that don't have utilities. It is right. that job growth is dependent upon the ability for us to supply those mm -hmm. that infrastructure. Right, right. And then there are a couple of things under this um, initiative that I don't think we're taking credit for, that we're putting some effort into, and that's the expansion of the STC. Now, we're not solely responsible for that, but I think it's safe to say the efforts of the city have had a material impact on accelerating that project with the school board. So again, I think it's one potentially one of Commissioner McDowell's celebratory Check off it's all of ours. Oh, yeah, but you brought it up, and it was an excellent point. Um, so I think that's one. The other is a, what's the name of that project? Um, the expansion of the Sarasota Technical College. Okay. Because that will double the college's capacity to train workforce. That's a technical education center. Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, Suncoast Technical College. I'm sorry, Suncoast. Suncoast. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and then the other is we've been sort of gently pursuing <clears throat> bringing a entrepreneurship center or leadership center to help grow small businesses in this city. Um, and I think it would be safe to claim as an interim sort of step to that we're working with 25 West and the county EDC and our own EDC team to bring that summer series to the city. Um, something like that takes an awful lot of coordination and work, and I think we ought to claim them. <laughs> so I think it would be good to add those, whether we do it as sort of one of the major projects or a check off. It, 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 it falls under an umbrella of increasing the programs that we offer to right. um, entrepreneurs and small businesses. Right. right. Mr. McDowell? Yeah, the only thing I wanted to see, and, and I'm not sure where it would be captured in here to Commissioner Langdon's point, is the workforce, um, educating the workforce. And because if you don't have an educated workforce, none of these other priorities are going to fit. And if that workforce doesn't have an affordable place to live, none of this is going to fit. Um, so um, I, I believe we have something in here about affordable housing. We do priority number six. But I don't know where, if it's maybe a new priority, that we include um, something about workforce um, education retention, something that's related to having a workforce that is sustainable for future businesses. There, I don't know how that would be worded. Right, it's, it's a qualified, you're trying to get, do we have a qualified workforce to fill the jobs we're trying to attract? Is, that's what I'm trying to figure out if we've got something that touches on that, but I'm sorry, there, go ahead. There's data in the Census and the American Community Survey that tracks education levels and percentages within communities. So it does have um, how many people um, finished high school, how many people went to a secondary college, how many people are degreed. Um, and and I, I'd have to look back. There may be something about, um, it may include the trade schools type thing, but it does track that education. And that's something that we could look at the trends because as that percentage goes up, that's more people available in the workforce to fill um, more jobs, obviously, that are, that are either skilled or um, based on education level. And wasn't that in the Camoyne study? They, mm -hmm. they tracked yes. that, and that's how we And knew, that's how they get that information that's how we knew as well. how many were leaving because the right. jobs that they were qualified for, we didn't have. We didn't yet. have. Yeah. So that, that's also information that's tracked through the census. Right, okay. 
Commissioner Dow, you have something? If that's it, Vice Mayor. Yeah, um, perhaps at least food for thought um, in whether it's an additional indicator or a program or an initiative. Um, one thing in the area of economic development we haven't quite evolved to, but or perhaps we are getting very close, would be some sort of a program or initiative to attract mid to large sized businesses to our city. We, we don't seem to have the resources yet available to actually go out and market ourselves to large companies that would create huge job influx. Um, I mean, the hospitals kind of just morphed to Northport, but while that will be a great economic cornerstone for us, there are, especially with Activity Center 6, enormous opportunity. If we're not careful, I mean, we're focused on being careful that we develop it non-residentially, but how we develop it non-residentially is equally as important. And there's so much land there that, you know, while we don't own it, to me, there's a piece missing in our economic development plan, and that's really going after, like, targeted companies that, that the city sees as strategic partners here. And, you know, Benderson's been one, but they've been here for a long, long, long time. And I think that there's room for more. And we don't really do anything to promote it. All we do, we do an awful lot when it comes to small and mid-sized and at home based businesses, you know, literally close to 100 a quarter. But that's not building a huge labor base here of companies that would hire, you know, thousands of employees, except for the hospitals coming. So I don't know how we integrate that, but it just seems like it ought to be an initiative, it ought to be a program. So the question is, does that, do we maybe expand that first bullet, develop and improve a series of economic development incentive programs and policies to encourage targeted development investment um, Opportunities, but something about large scale impactful employers is, I think, what you're getting at. Yeah, because it's yeah. a playoff, really, yeah. indicator yep. 2.1. Yep. Um, so, yeah, if I may, because I have um, an, an addition to what Vice Mayor said, we actually have upped what I would call tactical programs. Um, we do outreach and we go to different trade shows, and we now have our booth. and and all that kind of thing. But the conversation, you're right on, we don't have anything under here that talks about enhancing or increasing our tactical outreach to companies and industries. We are doing some things um, under that area, but we don't have anywhere to kind of capture that activity. So, um, And there's, there's aggressive approaches that you can take. I mean, yeah understanding where Fortune 500 companies are growing, what I would call new tech, not necessarily high tech, but new tech businesses that corporations expanding, looking for space, you know, when Amazon was out searching for their locations, to be able to, to, to focus on those things and see mm -hmm. what's going on in the greater world out there and how Northport has the resource, not just land-wise, but labor-wise, to be an attraction yep. to those types you, of Because you trigger another thought, and again, it's it's one of those things we're doing, and this doesn't <clears throat> acknowledge it. We've been working, the city has been working really effectively with the county to promote the industrial corridor, Toledo Blade, and we're beginning to see a lot of results and interest and activity along that corridor. So I agree with you. There's something missing from our initiatives and metrics they give us an opportunity to kind of capture and report on those more specific tactical programs. Yeah, we need a few more vendors. <laughs> yeah, even Mr. a baby vendor. Mr. McDowell. Yeah, and I think maybe that first bullet point where it says improve and maintain a business retention and expansion and business recruitment and attraction for it, it, all types of businesses, large, medium, small, but this also is in partnership with the Sarasota County EDC that we pay 
money for their assistance. So we need to really start tapping into that resource much more thoroughly than what I feel, feel we are doing. Um, we're their, one of their largest contributors for governmental entities and um, really would be interested to see, again, that return. It's, it's very important, and, and this is not a new subject for me. This is one of the first initiatives when I got um, elected was to make sure we're, we're mm -hmm. part of whatever it is that they're doing. And I'll be on the radar, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm suggesting what I think I'm hearing you say um, is that probably under that first program initiative, we may expand the statement a little bit. But I think what I'm also hearing you say is you desire to have an indicator to track kind of your outreach and your targeting so you get some idea how you're doing. That can be done internally and or through the county. And to your point, you've got major interchanges taking place off of, of uh, 75. And um, you know those are going to present, I don't know where you are in your planning and your land development codes and all that. I know that's a process. But those are typically major you know, commercial centers and potential office parks and whatever that major employer will be close to the access. So you've got some opportunities there. But um, also be recognizing that at some point, every decision you make closes off another decision down the road. So if you're trying to accomplish these goals of diversification of your, your resources, um, that becomes a point of zoning and land development and land use and entitlements and all those things kind of get squished together. So I know it's not as easy as just saying we want a factory there or a plant there because everybody's got a piece of the, their, their entitlement rights you've got to work through. Um, but you've got some unique opportunities coming in the future that if once that die is cast, you've lost it going forward. I think that's what you're trying to get at. Well, yeah, and, and you know, to, to Commissioner McDowell's point, the, the county EDC, Actually, in, in the couple of years, a handful of years I've been watching them, they have blossomed. They are, in my opinion, more focused on us in Northport than they ever have been before. And they're doing a great job in a lot of respects. But they have a whole county, yeah. you see. So I say sometimes, you know, the squeaky wheel gets <laughs> grease, and it's kind of nice to have that driver to be able to lead them a little as well as just follow them because there are some larger opportunities mm -hmm. that would make a big bang for our buck here. And, and I concern myself as we go out over the years with, with a, a wonderful potential of an activity center, six just getting gobbled up in little bits and pieces until like somehow it doesn't fit this master strategic that is the way to get to 20 to 25 percent yep. non-economic growth, and do it in a way that's that's inclu inclusive of of what Northport really wants to be, with a buy-in of all these non-residential major players into a live, work, and play mentality, mm -hmm. where we can have some limited levels of, of of residential, but also quality of life type things within it. That, that we leverage those partners for. And that requires sizable players. Yep. So, yep. yep. And, and if you land one of those, you may be tracking something in the future about how many jobs you're importing versus exporting in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, those are things to take into account. But right. yeah, I mean, clearly you've got to be, the way that works um, is that your county receives notices about major projects that have certain elements and requirements and water and sewer requirements and transportation, all those. And then the counties typically look around where they've got, do I have a player or not? So uh, you're, you're poised for some of that work here, clearly. Absolutely. All right, I have a few. Uh, Commissioner Langdon? I'm all set. All set? Yeah. Uh, by smell you want, Commissioner McDowell? Yeah, I just wanted to add my primary projects and suggestions. Got it. So um, the Activity Center Master Plan, that's one of the um, bulleted points. We can put that as... Um, you know, one of those primary projects, the ULDC rewrite, that could be another primary project. These are things that are in here already. Um, Warminal Springs and Legacy Trail, I know we talked about Warminal Springs during the quality of life, but maybe it does really belong in here because it's an economic driver. And of course, the housing study that is um, already underway, supposed to be underway. Um, so those were some of the primary projects that I was um, thinking that we could add. So the activity center, what was the other one? <clears throat> activity I mean. centers, ULDC, or Middle Springs slash Legacy Trail, and the housing study. 
And those were just my yeah. thoughts. You know, of course, staff is going to have to, you know, see if there's any others that. Gotcha. Yep, it fall under play. Okay. All right. Okay. Everybody else good with the other indicators are on this list? All good. Um, Mayor, I have one question. Yes. Um, looking at indicator 6.3 um, in this area, the research and proposed land use regulations to reflect inclusionary zoning. Um, I think inclusionary zoning means different things to different people and communities. I'd be interested in what our definition of that is. Staff, this is one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not touching that one because your code says what it is. <laughs> yeah. well, we don't have it in our code. That was something that I'm was sorry, supposed to be. I'm sorry, caught me typing. Uh, <laughs> could you, so, would you mind just, repeating that? I was poking a little bit at indicator 6.3, research and propose land use regulations to reflect inclusionary zoning. What do we mean by inclusionary zoning? So that's something that we had talked about uh, last year. Two, I guess. 20, <laughs> yeah, three. three <laughs> 22. Um, in, inclusionary zoning is where you require a certain percentage of affordable housing units in all new um, residential development. Uh, that's how I would do Most of the time it's <laughs> it's affordable. Um, most of the time it's multifamily. I have worked on some projects that actually were um, single family ownership right. uh, properties with, with income thresholds for purchase. But um, typically you will see it in multifamily. Um, we are at this point, what we're what we've proposed in the ULDC is incentivizing <coughs> that, but not mandating it. Um, most jurisdictions around Florida do not mandate it; they don't mandate the thresholds. Um, but it's certainly something that the commission could do. Um, it's just it, sometimes it will uh, create more of a barrier to workforce housing. So, and it's, it's definitely um, one of the things that would be considered more burdensome that the state has preempted us from doing until um, 2027. So it's another yeah, thing to I, consider. That, that, that would be my definition also of inclusionary zoning. And I would just, as a caution, I've never seen that work without a state mandate. Because otherwise, it sets up all kinds of market inequities. You know, one community does it, it adds a lot of cost or whatever to the burden of development. And so a neighboring community becomes much more attractive. So it's a slippery slope without that kind of, I, I could see it becoming a legislative <laughs> uh, item, but. I, I just, I, I there, don't know what your experience has been, Doug, but I think it's tough to pull off at a city or a municipality level without a state. We are, so we are certainly we precluded right now. Yeah. We are precluded from, we are preempted from doing it right now. Right, right. Um, yeah, so you've got some elements of live local where you could, right. a developer could come in and put things in place. I will tell you, uh, not in Florida, but in Connecticut, for example, um, affordable housing has become such a challenge at the state legislature, to your point, said you've got to hit a certain target percentage. Yep. And if not, any developer can come in and place a, an affordable housing unit in, regardless of your zoning designations, and it's created havoc. So yeah. in many communities there, it's the threat of preventing those things from happening where communities are doing everything they can to get their percentage to achieve that minimum level so they don't have to deal with a project that then becomes very controversial but otherwise legal under the state statutes. So. There's a little bit of carrot stick there, to your point. Yeah. Some communities are doing it to avoid getting beat up and having to deal with it. Other communities are reacting to it afterwards. Right. So. right. Mr. McDowell, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, hmm. Regarding the inclusionary zoning, and thank you, Elena, for stating that the state does not allow us to do anything with inclusionary zoning. We're preempted. Thank you, state. 
um, I guess. But what other municipalities have done is if a developer comes and says, hey, we'd like a waiver or modification to the code on parking or building height or whatever, we say, ah, you want this? Well, in return, you're going to have to mm -hmm. give mm -hmm. X percentage for inclusionary zoning for, for um, affordable housing. Absolutely. Uh, Income-based housing, stuff like that. Yep. And, and it... it because you're compensating them. Yeah, you want something, we want something. How do we find a common ground? We want something, ground? so hey, let's yep. work together and put on our happy faces and get this done. Yep. Um, and they're still making the money in return on their investment mm -hmm. to do it. And, and you hit it on the head, they've got entitlement land rights, but mm -hmm. in some cases, if they can't totally fit into your box, that gives you that door exactly. to open for and those conversations. I think that is where this indicator was going to in our conversation with inclusionary zoning back mm -hmm. When you first had started mm -hmm. and we had that big, right. huge discussion about workforce housing and inclusionary zoning, mm -hmm. John Thaxon came and right. gave his speech about it and stuff like that. Right. It was a really great mm -hmm. workshop. It was really an informative workshop. Yeah. And, and by incorporating uh, incentives and uh, the potential for automatic, I don't want to say waivers, but for, audit, for automatic provisions if you provide a certain number of affordable housing units um, in the ULDC, we, I think we accomplished 6.3. I really gonna, saw you could this just more as an incentive well, thing than a regulation it's an, it, thing. Right, you know. that, and that's how, that because of the state preemption, right. we have to handle it as an incentive rather right. than just yeah, a carrot rather than the regulations that threw me off. off. Would, the term, <laughs> would the term at the end of inclusionary zoning, if you put in the term opportunities, would that get you there? Or do you want to eliminate incentives instead think, of regulations? I think should be incentives. incentives. incentives Research right. and proposed land use incentives. Okay, Except right. Inclusionary zoning. Okay. <coughs> All right. I think so we do strike. have that somewhere else, but yeah, the uh, six point two gets it. Yes. Incentives also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And replace with incentives. Okay. Okay, and that's under 6.3. 6.3. That right. really clarifies all of that. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. All right. And it sounds like you're in concert, just having the words match what you're the doing. Language, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on this slide? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're working our way through it. All right. Environmental resiliency and sustainability. I won't read the statement pretty long there, but uh, you know it's been a, a cornerstone of your your overall plan now for several years. All right, your priority. You wanted to be, in essence, a leader. Um, talking about trans, you know, the, the totality of kind of a green community, if you will, through your code, your ordinances, your parks and recreation, um, protection of tree species as they're going through development. Moved the first, what is now a program or initiative, redevelopment public facilities reflect lead design standards. And then your first tracking is how are you coming on that effort? <laughs> Showing green infrastructure and development standards used to be a priority, is now a program with a variety of uh, indicators that fall underneath it. I really liked this. I thought it was pretty tight great. there. Okay. Second priority in this area, protection of native species and habitats via public education, land acquisition, and conservation. A lot of conversation about Florida friendly, and this related to people come from the different parts of the community, Florida species and its water uses are all different here. So um, got some indicators about how you're doing that, how you're tracking it, how you're proposing um, the use of that and the preservation of your, your green space. As I recall, part of the drivers in this was this development occurred, tearing out of trees and things of that nature, and making sure your ULDC tries to protect as much of that as possible. Okay, that was it for environmental. Any, anything we've missed? Uh, Commissioner McDowell. Yeah, um, going back to the, the list. primary yep. project, okay. um, the canopy study is something that we have talked about doing as a canopy study, and I believe that's in the CIP sheet. I'm not 100% sure, um, but we did 
give that green light for that. I think the Natural Resource Division is working on that. I don't okay. know. Um, I was thinking about the neighborhood expansion of city water, city sewer, but that project is so massive. I, I don't know how you would check that off and celebrate until every last property is hooked up. I, I don't know. That's probably going to fall under the next bucket on infrastructure. Um, that's probably yeah, where we'll talk. So let's 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 okay. pick that one back up there. Right. It's going to be that yeah. was your conversion of septic to sewers, right? So make sure we don't lose it. Septic to sewer. That's what you're referring to, correct? Yeah. Septic sewer. The okay. neighborhood water, water and sewer expansion project. Uh, uh, septic sewer and water expansion. Yeah. Right. Okay. So some people are in your wells. That's right. Water expansion. Okay. We'll come back to pick that one up. Well, that was just the only one that really I thought of was the canopy study. We were talking about doing one of those. Okay. And that could be one of those primary projects. That... Yep. yep. I just had a comment to make about oh. the the canopy study. Yes, we're working towards that. But there's nothing in here about um, involving uh, putting back trees on people's own property, like other communities have implemented. Uh, using tree fund money to, they can plant a tree in front of their own house. Um, Isn't I think, I think it's under. I think yeah, there's something under probably, disaster. Yeah, I think. I there is think I, I'll put it in the parking lot to come back to check that. But I think we have something about it one is, of the programs um, without flipping the slides over. But I think there was something because you lost so many of your your trees during the the hurricane Ian, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. Um, well, but that, let's let's that come back. To, maybe addressing public. Like our right of ways and things like that, but I was referring to having people on their own properties, encouraging them to plant trees on their own properties because people are taking trees down on their own properties. This is what I've seen, and people have questioned that too. Um, you know, what what good is a tree canopy study when you're not going to be putting trees back into neighborhoods, but they're not on the right of ways necessarily. So don't you said it's someplace else. In here, because yeah. this is referencing the tree canopy, and I'm right. assuming that means we're going to take action. And is that action only going to be on right of ways and what we can control? But okay. others were asking about private. having private citizens. Yeah, it contributes to the overall yeah, canopy of your community, right? It's, it's your, it's basically your plan. Um, you know, so if that's something you want to include as a program, that's fine. But I, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. City I mean, manager, go ahead. I agree that that's the commission's call, but it's. The way it reads, it says explore mm -hmm. the establishment of a tree replacement program to mitigate the impacts of North Port's tree inventory post Hurricane Ian. So it doesn't say if it's for city or public, but I don't think I, I don't think we've had this discussion before. To no, but it's it's always been the assumption with this that that's the city's obligation right. to do that, You're not asking. drawing on the citizens. Like you also have the yeah. responsibility to add to that tree canopy. And now you're asking, can we add their responsibility to ours? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, but we're talking yeah. about an, an overall tree canopy of 35%. So here, here's where I think the potential disconnect may be. Are you proposing that that's something that is an educational effort, or are you proposing something that has a financial, con maybe a, a match of a dollar amount or something of that nature? I, I just want to make sure you know I understand and staff understands well, what you're. Both. Maybe both. Okay. Because I All mentioned right. that other communities are using their tree fund, which is. Mm -hmm. gathered from land development. Right. When you tear down say, a tree, you get X number of dollars. Here, yeah. We'll, we'll give you a tree. Or if you contribute $100, we will provide the tree and, and planting. OK. You can OK. Do that. So, Commissioner McDowell? Yeah, we had talked about doing a, uh, like a free tree giveaway kind of thing. Um, and if I remember correctly, we had to work through the process to determine that that met public um, purpose, and there was a thing from the city attorney's office that said, if we do this, it has, we have to decide that it meets the public purpose because we would be using taxpayer dollars or tree fund money for that. But we did have that discussion, um, and I think we were waiting for the Natural Resource Department to come back with mm -hmm. some ideas and suggestions because the EAB has already weighed in on that also. So. It, okay. it, it hasn't been lost. I just, I think we're waiting for the resource. Okay, city manager. I think the director already wants to speak. 
So a, a couple of things. We are, uh, in fact, I met with our natural resources manager this morning, came directly from there to here, um, about the tree canopy. And they're working on that. Um, so we will, they're, they're going to be putting together a report um, on that assessment. One of the things that we talked about that leads directly to your discussion right now is breaking the city out into sectors so that we can see by sector what the tree canopy looks like in specific zones within the city. And that will help us identify if one of those or more, more than one of those zones are below the threshold where it needs to be. We could target tree planting and tree, grant, tree giveaway um, programs to those specific sectors because the public purpose would be to ensure that every sector in the city has a minimum tree coverage that helps reduce heat island effects. Um, it helps reduce erosion. It helps with all uh, stormwater and all sorts of public purpose mm -hmm. things. The, the Commissioner is absolutely right that we have to tie that to the public purpose. And that's one of the ways we can do that is by that sector breakdown. Um, and, and identify those targeted areas that way. Okay, and I'm bringing this up because I know we've had a lot of residents lamenting about when they see large parcels mm -hmm. cleared. I know it's, a, it's right. a very devastating impact and you right. see it at once, but when I go and, and yes, I Google people's houses to see and they don't even have a tree planted on their own property. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like you can do something to add to that tree canopy yourself. And yes. that's what I'm, I'm getting at with this, that we include everybody, yes. that everyone has a responsibility to provide for the tree canopy. Right, and that's the other component is the education for Right Tree, Right Place to help educate people on where they actually can plant trees on their property because so many of their builders say, oh, you have to get rid of everything, you can't have anything. And, and that's Next simply fine the report. They, not fine, but if they say that, okay, but you can plant back. And right, and, and helping them understand yeah. what kind of trees, where those trees should be, mm -hmm. um, is, is one of the things that we're okay. putting together. Great, great, thank you. Okay. Right. So, oh, wait a minute, I, Vice Mayor, did you? Yeah, you know, just to piggyback off of what Elena said, and, and the mayor, our natural resource division is going to be hopefully promoting ideas to utilize some of this tree fund to actually do plantings, appreciate it, kick-started their division and, and help to fund the, the labor and the resources needed to get that up off the ground. But there are some collaborative programs that I would hope they're going to bring forward that involve the community, mm -hmm. as Mayor says, and the ability to leverage. You plant a tree, we match it. Or you know, you plant a tree on your property even, or, you know, and we'll do something else. Again, with the focus on what's the public good, which is how we have to do this. So I get that. But um, there's a lot of things, and I'd look, I mean, that's what I'm hoping one of the things the Natural Resources Department does. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, part of the reason they were created. Because mm -hmm. I think the city of Venice was just, uh, did you mm -hmm. that they just started that too now? Uh, and I know... Another, I think the city of Sarasota had, yeah, city of Sarasota had it first, and I think the city of Venice just had a big PR thing come out about somebody had a tree planted in front of their house with cooperation with the city's fund, whatever that was. So I thought, eh, we should do the same thing. Right. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so there may be something here, um, or it may fall into the post-recovery. This is kind of an ongoing program for overall tree canopy. The other was much more specific to the tree loss that you occurred. I suspect you can make a pretty strong nexus for public public benefit, similar to flow restrictors in your water. For you know, even though you're selling water, you're trying to conserve water, and so utilities often will hand out and do audits, energy audits, and things of that nature to try to do it. To you know, even those are public cost, any private benefit that mm -hmm. may be perceived as private benefit, but it reduces your overall utility reliance. I would expect this category to go through some refinement and and morph and and you know, a, a more as our, as our natural resource department it really hits its stride over this next year as it's been newly created. And I sure. would think there'll be a lot of tweaking and modification 
on set priorities and indicators as we go forward with this. I think you're on track. And if you get that going, you, you yeah. step on that, you'll probably have a variety of efforts, you know, obviously yeah. going forward. So, but that's that's the value. You start it off and then you start, you know, let it roll. That's that's the implementation of your plan. So, okay. Um, all right. So I did want to, when I was going back to my checkoff list here on the parking lot, um, Mr. I wanted to go back to the plans review. I want to go back to economic development just to make sure we didn't miss something in this parking lot. So I apologize. I'm going to go back to economic development. We had, let me find a, let me start here to make sure I get it right here. Uh, that was an overall regulatory. Okay, so we had we had this. You had, um, Mr. Lang, you had had this plans review um, about the completion of a process for like fast tracking. I just want to make sure this was a parking lot item. Right now, these are the indicators we have that that deal kind of with planning approvals. One, two point one, two point two, and two point three. And do they fully capture what you were getting at, or do we need to tweak that? or tweak or maybe add something there. Uh, you had raised about, uh, well, it was a question we talked about whether it was in safe community, but it was about the completion of a, of a oh, plans review process the, is what took it was place. the implementation of the automation of the yeah, that, process. Yeah, that, that, so, um, yeah so is, is this, do we cover things this way, or do you feel that we needed to adjust it? Because this kind of gets, I think, at what I understood you were trying to capture in that comment. Yeah, it was just that. We're in the process. Acela is the name of the software package that okay. we're implementing okay. for that. Maybe that would be one of those primary projects that are yes. underway yep. and put it on that yep. list of Sella, a primary project under economic development. Sell a project as a um, list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's your that's your software that's tracking the process. Right. But yes, yeah, sell out to other ones. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I just want to I knew we had in the parking lot. And I, I, we passed that one. I wanted to come back to capture that one as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to where we were. I think we were finished up environmental resiliency. Nothing else there. Pretty good there. Okay. All right. Infrastructure and facilities. Um, you know, roads, bridges, water control structures, etc. <laughs> Everything incorporated there for current and future needs. Um, hi, right. okay. Water control structures, stormway conveyances with an indicator. Trying to get 80% of the compliant list, so very tight, tight measurement there. Rehabilitation of your roadway and bridges. To indicate your report what's been uh, what's been done so it's not just a work effort but you know you're getting a track of where you are overall in your plans and identifying high use bridges for safety and welfare Commissioner Lane did you have something on that before we um, go to the next slide or? well just sort of on a whole section if you're yeah. ready to open okay. it up all right you want to work through the section first and then uh, and then yeah, we can figure the out section okay. and then I'll okay. all right back thank you all right East-West connectivity and reliability of your water and the water reclamation system. The structure activities that move from priorities to programs, but still having indicators. This gets, I think, what you were getting at, Commissioner McDowell, as far as the looping of the water and the getting people in there. Are we, are we comfortable with that measurement, that statement? Make sure we got captured it right. Wastewater collection treatment systems, television maintenance activities, rehabilitation of lift stations, the looping of the public water lines in residential areas. Looking at preventative maintenance. And then also looking at getting your utilities out to your new interchanges which once again goes to support your economic development activity, but certainly as part of your infrastructure pillar at this stage. And you're talking about the facilities. Comprehensive study of your facilities. It's actually now a program with indicators, with perceptions of city maintenance work orders, as well as perceptions of condition of your facilities being tracked.
improving efficiencies to access for, for preparation of future growth. A couple we mentioned earlier, parks in certain areas and other facilities that may be needed as you grow in different sections of your community. Okay, so uh, I think Commissioner Langland, you had some comments about yeah, this section? Yeah, I just have a couple. Priority three, while we're improving east-west mm -hmm. connectivity, and I, and I do support that, it's a huge issue. I think we also need to look at access outside the city. So I'd like us to consider um, adding a couple of things, which is extending price to River Road as a specific. And again, I don't care where it goes, if it's a major project. This is very long term. Extend price to River Road? To River Road. If, if we don't call them out, I, I, my concern is we'll lose track of them. And the other is the extension of Toledo Blade to Arcadia. I always forget if that's Highway 72. 70 or 72. You can tell me today and tomorrow I'll say 70. So. Yeah. To Arcadia? Is it Arcadia or Arcadia? Or Arcadia? Yeah. To Clark Road. Oh, Clark. I'm sorry. I had the wrong word all together. I'm sorry. I'll remember Clark Road. Clark Road. Okay. They're very long-term projects, but um, I just had a very interesting experience a couple of weeks ago. I could not get out of the city to head north. Okay. Couldn't do it. So adding those as programs, there are consensus on that? Yeah, either programs or initiatives. Or Program or initiative, that's what I'm thinking whatever. of at this point since yeah. it's kind of at the front end. Do you want to do consensus? Consensus to add those two as programs? Talk. Program slash initiatives under this this section, but or not? Go ahead. I could just weigh in. I I understand what uh, Commissioner Langdon is saying about these connectivities. They are so far into the future, and they're really outside of our jurisdiction. Um, and I, th they're not even in our city. Whereas the connectivity for I-75, Raintree, and Yorkshire, those are in our city, and yes, we are working with FDOT. But once you leave our city limits on price, and once you leave our city limits on Toledo Blade, it's out of our control. Okay. And and I'm, I, this is our strategic plan, and I, I recognize the need to work with regional partners, um, but we're really at their mercy. And I, I hear what you're saying, but this is our strategic plan. And I, I'm not too sure how that looks, because it's far more than five years out. We're not going to do anything on this within the next two to five years. Thank you. Because we really need the partnership of outside jurisdictions. I, I respectfully disagree with Commissioner McDowell. Um, both of these roads originate within our city. Extending both of these roads have a significant impact on evacuation routes, the movement of our population. We are locked in by environmental land, and it disturbingly limits our ability to move around this region. So I think just, you know, once we go outside of our city, we don't really control that, but we do influence it. Um, and I think it's so essential. And I, d I don't think we should shy away from having things in our strategic plan um, that include working cooperatively with other jurisdictions. Um, so just for example, it was I had another sort of aha moment. A few weeks ago, we, um, we badged a number of new police officers. Mm -hmm. And I think almost half of them, or third or half of them, three or four of them came from Arcadia. Mm -hmm. They have to commute <laughs> all the way around the world <laughs> to come to work because there's no connectivity between two municipalities that, that really at some point are really going to there will be significant economic benefit mm -hmm. to both entities to have that connectivity. So um, I don't think we should shy away from things that 
rely on our ability to work proactively and productively with other municipalities. Let me and suggest how this. How does that get measured, oh. though? For well, we this can figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Let me suggest yeah. this, and I think gets at both of your points. Um, so you're right that to do work that requires uh, transportation, transportation planning is a long-term project, without a doubt. <laughs> right away, acquisition, planning, all those things are taken to play, let alone funding. So what if you had something either as a priority or as a program where you said something in a broad level to say, um, you know, working with your TPO, MPO, I don't know what they're called here, everybody calls them a little bit differently, um, to proactively address um, or strategic uh, egress, in, egress, ingress um, components to the city of Northport. That's a broad statement, but I think I'm getting right, it saying right. it affects you locally. You have to play outside the box because right. these are outside your area, but it does affect your quality of life and transportation. Right. So right. I think we could word something there. The question is whether it's a priority or whether it is a program yeah. uh, is something we can do. And then you don't necessarily have to be specific about the locations, to your point about saying where that would be, but saying, listen, Getting in and out of our community is something that you're concerned with as a commission, right. but you don't have total control. You have some influence through TPO or MPO, but if you have it as a priority or a program in your plan, then you've at least said publicly, this is important to us, even though we can't fully control it. Right. Well, if we, we have a couple options, we could reword priority three to be improve ingress and egress <laughs> mm -hmm. within and without the city. And then we could add, you know, um, that sort of outward bound transportation as an item under that or add another priority. And I liked your phrasing. You kind of pulled it up to a higher, more yeah, strategic okay. level. So, I'd, I'd be happy with that. I just don't want to lose. An, and I know it's going to be very long term. And, and all of that, but if we don't capture it somewhere, we'll forget about it. My sense is that priority three is totally, I mean, we've had a lot of conversation over the years about yeah. east-west movement within yeah. the city. So I think that one's probably a standalone priority under your control. Mm -hmm. My sense is that if you wanted to add something at a high level about around your community for egress and ingress that are strategically you know, aligned with your internal goals, then that's probably a second priority. Okay. Or in this case, a fourth, you know, it would change your priority. But I, my sense is if you're comfortable with what I think I'm hearing you say, that we craft the priority statement that gets you, um, doesn't commit you to a particular project, but commits right. you to, right. it's an important thing of this commission to be focused on external connective points yeah. to and from the city. Make, like make sense, right? I like that external connection. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you have yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. I mean, it is, it is a priority. I don't think it's a program, but I agree. At some point in time, and and there are a number of priorities in the infrastructure area that are larger than us, and are going to involve some, some collaboration, so to speak, in the areas of water utilities and, and some other things. It, this is a monster project. I, I mean, I would love to live so long as to see all this, because it does involve uh, preserves and other areas that are environmentally sensitive. So this is a massive, and, and the amount of money we're talking about here is in the billions. So you're talking right. about federal, <laughs> state, county, you know, involvement. But yeah, it does, I think, needs to be a priority, because it's something our people have been calling for for years. I mean, they don't, I don't think grasp the whole subject and what would be involved in actually coming up with an environmentally friendly plan to, right. Right. to grow a transportation system through two major preserves, which is really what we're talking <laughs> about here. What, what could possibly be complicated, possibly complicated about that, right? <laughs> right. But, but it's probably not bad that it stays on our radar. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I'm good with it being a separate priority. Makes sense. Everybody good with that? Yeah, and I yeah. don't think, uh, you know, because there's other jurisdictions involved, because, for example, the, the exchange we're talking about for Yorkshire that right. we're dealing right. with Shirley yeah. County. City limits. But it, it is involving Shirley yeah. County as well. Yeah, and we have to work with other entities for some of our things. So right. at least it, right. if it's on the radar, like Commissioner Langdon's saying, that uh, 
it can justify when this starts getting talked about or the need to have other ways out of, out of the city. Because actually the only east-west connector we have other than Tropic Care, which I know is uh, for some reason off limits for, for people, but that's, it's just price to get to east to west in the city that we can control. Because that, that's always been put out there that even with the uh, multi-use pathway, it's been said the people out there don't want it, so let's take that off. And I'm assuming they don't, wouldn't want a four-lane well, they're going to probably be getting a four lane in the near future. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> let's just start getting the use of the idea now, okay, that that's going to happen. If they didn't want to see a sidewalk out there. I'm very happy I'll be dead by the time that conversation <laughs> really Well, happens. I'm going to be happy that you're dead, but I'm just going to go with it. That is, uh, I think we get where you're coming from there, Commissioner. So. At least I won't be here when that conversation comes up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to make it a priority. It'll be broad, yeah. egress, yeah. ingress, strategic, like, yeah. and like, involving yeah. intergovernmental yeah. partnerships. Yeah, network. Gotcha, network. gotcha. That way nobody's caught External up in, in the detail on it. Okay. Good <laughs> enough. All right, that'll help you okay. in your discussions with your TPO, yeah, MPO, to get on your work carried. plan to say, yes. hey, these are things yeah. that we think are this, important. This document's going to be carried forward. Yeah. So even though we, we won't deal with that. At some point, it'll have, a, it'll have kids and grandkids and yeah. great-grandkids yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of evolve yeah. over time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, what will happen is in five years or whenever they redo this, they'll go, why did the commission put that on the strategic plan? No, they'll know. <laughs> Oh, they yeah. know exactly oh. why. It's going to hit them in the face. Sure yeah. I, make yeah. the, I will right. guarantee you it happens because when I work around that, sometimes I'm the only link back to what they did exactly. and say, here's what was going on at that time. So, right. But I, I hear what you're saying, definitely. Yeah. Well. All you got to do is look back at that 2017 strategic plan, and I even kind of went, why did we put that on there? It made sense at the time, right? <laughs> you know, so. All right. Uh, anything else in infrastructure that we didn't cover here? Yes. The, uh, going back to the primary Projects, project yeah. list, okay. um, this uh, solid waste transfer um, station, the I-75 um, inter new interchanges in Activity Center 6. Uh, solid waste um, transfer station, transfer right? Transfer station, right, right. sorry, I'm being too quick. That's all right. Transfer station. And these are just, again, yep. I, I, I seventy five. my little things that I kind of came up with. Um, the I-75 interchange improvements, that is a very big one that we're still trying to work through, I guess. Okay. And then Price Boulevard. <laughs> and which one? Price Boulevard. Price. <laughs> at some, at some point when I'm back, we're not going to be talking about Price Boulevard. <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, my God. We are going to have to throw a huge city yeah, You guys are going to have a party for that one, I'm sure. Yeah. Phase one. Phase one. Phase one. Okay. Phase one. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I do have Commissioner Langdon. Go ahead. Yeah, one other comment. Priority nine. Number nine. I'm I'm wondering if this is the place for the EOC and the new police headquarters, um, because they're very high ticket specific. <clears throat> Again, whether they're priorities or programs, I don't rightly care, just so long as they're captured. And um, I would suggest adding to that the refurbishment of the old police headquarters. Because that'll be a oh. major project. Just so I understand, any plans, or it's just at some point no. it's a city asset, you've got to figure out what you're going to do with it. Well, the, at some point, the police will move out, other city departments will move in, mm -hmm. and it will need to be refurbished and refigured to support the work of gotcha. the other groups moving in. Nature of boards of vacuum. There's always a, <laughs> there's always a fill in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll figure out. And this is where it gets a little bit, it's a judgmental. Does that fall under safe communities? Does that fall under facilities? Right. Uh, probably the refurbishment of the former work, I would think, probably fits under your infrastructure. But the PDEOC is so specific to their operations, I, I suggest you leave them there. in the public yeah, safety component. Public yeah, because yeah. this will be probably non public safety related. The other would be public safety. Yeah. That makes sense. Vice Mayor? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Again, I think these these are more projects yes. that go to the project list that Commissioner McDowell's been been you know 
correcting yep. some of these things too. It's not a priority. I mean, all the city facilities are mm -hmm. need improving and need growing and need, in some cases, replacement. Mm -hmm. So I don't think singling them out, I mean, if they're an actual project, if they're CIP money, if we're dedicated to doing that's one thing. Otherwise, like, I like the idea of a general priority here because, you know, we've yet to come to grips with, with prioritizing these projects right. and determining where we're best to put our financial resources. And this one getting back to where we started this morning about at some point you got to figure out where you're going to fund it go. in the area. So, but I'm assuming uh, most of your your CIP will have some major projects that would be listed here. Some of these may or may not be in there, but this is one clearly I doubt that the refurbishment of the building is identified in your current CIP because it's right. still a work in progress. So, right. yeah. If, if I could just real quick add one more to that uh, projects list is the Public Works building expansion. Okay. Up, up above by Price Boulevard. Uh, just oh, okay. Public Works. Yeah. Public Works um, building expansion. That's another big project that's working its way through. Every time you write one of these project lists, this preliminary or project yep. list, I'm sitting there going, God, there's never going to be enough money to do all this. <laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll try to capture a second section. We revise the report, but then we're going to have to have staff go back to your CIP, and we'll figure out kind of where that, that line gets drawn. So, all right. OK. Anything else in infrastructure facilities? Commissioner McDowell, are you okay? Yeah, I'm We're okay. good. Oh, sorry. Good. Bill? No, I have a, before we even launch into good governance, I, I, I'd like to address in general a good governance, so I'm ready to move past infrastructure. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Good governance. A lot of stuff in this. This is a big, this is a big bucket for you, a big pillar. <laughs> so do you want to do something at the front end of this, or you want me to go through it, and then you want to react I, to I the tail I would like end? to, because I think... It, it points to the need for an additional priority that I don't really think is is in this under this pillar. Um, I mean, we do touch on it in priority to maximize financial resources, support through partnerships, grants, and proactive physical management. Um, all we really touch on is is grants, but but I think at this point in, in our city's evolution, the need. To make a to to build a priority around the city's ability to finance all its projects within its pillars, not finance them all at once, but to address what is becoming a major issue for us is the ability to pull the financial resources together to address many of the priorities and projects that fall within all the pillars, and I think the police headquarters project has really focused our attention on it. I think it needs to be a priority because I think it's an ongoing process for us as we grow as a city. One of the things we really need to spend a lot of focus and attention on is garnering the resources we need in order to be able to finance our growth mm -hmm. going forward and, and keep up with the need to provide the quality of services and infrastructure that our citizens expect. And it's a huge priority. In fact, if not the hugest priority among all these pillars, and it, it underpins every single one of these. Sure, all comes down so, to what you're willing to yeah, fund. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I just, nothing we do here under, I, I assume it falls under good governance. I, I don't know where else it would, but it's, you know. I think that's that's a fair statement. Let's let's do this. Um, I'll capture it in the parking lot. Let's go through the let's go through the priorities. Figure out if there's a tweaking and adjustment, or if, or if it's a new one that you want to add. But I want to make sure we capture it, and uh, that's where we started the conversation this morning. <laughs> so it all boils down to money at the end of the day. So, okay, all right. So let's uh, go through your good governance, your priorities, um, responsive services, internal and external. We've moved some things from priorities into programs here. Everybody good with this first page? I believe our website is complete. I know that at one point we had um, website was on our strategic plan. 
Um, and um, I'll defer to staff. Are you is that project still a work in progress, or is it on one point two? Uh, for one point two, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, considering you literally just added something to it earlier today when you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> So it's always ongoing, so I would not say it's complete. Uh, okay, so maybe. Okay, you have so the dashboard you with... that's still under construction, right? Well, the transparency website is where the dashboard lives. Right. And so right. if we do what you asked for earlier this morning, was right. to, which makes sense, a strategic plan update on there. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised we didn't think of that, but yeah, it makes perfect sense. Collective. So, all right. So, is the is the way we word it appropriate, or is there a desire to to change it? I don't think what I'm hearing you say is there's still more work to be done. So, I don't right. think you're getting rid of it. The question is, is that okay? Are we okay the way it's worded now, or do you want to enhance that or change that in some way? Well, this, if I may, ma'am, mm -hmm. four point one says refine the current dashboard to report strategic <coughs> objectives and operational metrics. That's already in there. Yeah, yeah. So I think that covers what direction we we were talking about there's a, earlier. Yeah, there's a refinement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So going back. Oops, I'm sorry. I guess I'm open to your comments. Leave it at, leave it as is, or or not, or one point two. You okay with that? This one also really deals with your budgeting document. Um, I don't know to what extent. Sometimes some communities do online efforts where you got a hundred dollars. You tell us where you want to spend it, that sort of thing, or not, mm -hmm. uh, which may be different than your right. strategic planning portal, if you will, about your tracking your plan. To your point, Commissioner. Yeah, two different two different sites. Correct. Yeah, two different pages. Okay. Okay, leaving it. All right. A uh, couple of things that were moved into the programs, customer care center and um, an engagement process. Customer care center is done. I thought everything is finished on that. That one we could cross off and celebrate. Yay, because we've had a couple. Is that done? I believe it is. Yes, um, no, maybe not. I see Mr. Marlowe coming his way. Sometimes it's not as black and white as we right. thought, right? The first bullet point. I don't think the first bullet. First bullet. Complete, complete the establishment of the customer care center. That's what you're asking for, oh. right? Uh, hello, commissioners. Jason Bartolo, communications manager. Um, the customer care center, as I understand, when this was added, has been implemented. We do have the customer care center at the front desk, um, and, and implemented into our other departments, and they answer phone calls. Um, if there's a desire to enhance or um, extend the services, that's something we're always looking to improve. Um, but it is completed as far as implementing. Yeah, the establishment. Cross stop, celebrate. So we're going to take that out. This is where we go. Okay. <laughs> well, when you do your first update, you can say this is something within your plan. It's done. So okay. All right. So we'll strike that one. Anything else on this page we want to address? Don't go anywhere yet. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think is good there? Some internal workings in your processes. Any comments on the, these priorities or indicators? Okay. Priority three. Your snapshot. Bill, anything you want to chime in on this one? Because this is one where a lot of this <laughs> is where the rubber meets the road and the numbers that you've been talking about as well. So we good with where it is. This is long term. Capital needs. I believe 3.2 is done also, where we have come up with a planning cycle for renewal and replacement. Um, that R and R fund that we've been talking about for quite a few years. I, I think that that's finished. I don't know if that's probably a public works 
Uh, that probably cuts across all right. your utilities right. and everything right. else. But it's going to be yeah. the renewal and replacement is through the public works, even though it's for all of the departments. Oh, okay. I, oftentimes, R and R will be in your utilities that would be separate from streets and things like that. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I, how I, you're classifying it here. So R and R could be it could be streets, it could be fleet, vehicles, it could be it, yeah. utility. R and R, you know, okay. it's tracked differently that, based I, upon whether it's a an internal service fund, or a, a general fund, or or a utility or a enterprise fund. We'll follow back up. Okay. All right. So check on status. Okay. Check on status. All right. Um, Phil, this, as I said, this may be just food for thought. This may be kind of the priority section. Yeah. Whether that fits or whether we want to change it or add a priority, I just this kind of gets a little bit of what you're, I think you're getting at. I mean, you know, 3.1 indicator just sort of touches on it, but then you get down to 3.3, develop and implement an annual collaborative revenue analysis and rate request. Maybe it could be an indicator, it just, the word indicator, Bob, I mean, it's like it's a project or it's a something, but maybe it is an indicator because I think we need to call out the need for, for a program of, you know, I mean, it's probably, let's just call this, we need to be able to borrow money. We need to address that elephant in the room with the city, with our citizens, among our commission and staff, we need to find a way to borrow money. It's just that simple. We can't do it. We, right now, we can't do it. It's a charter amendment issue, yet it's somewhere in our, in our plan here. It ought to be some focus. It's just like saying we need roads that take us out to River Road, mm -hmm. to, you know, Clark Road. I mean, these are bigger projects. Well, this is certainly a high priority item so we got to figure out how we're going to finance all these projects and and it needs to really jump out i don't i don't know whether it should necessarily be a new priority or an indicator but it's something we're sure going to spend a lot of time talking about commissioner yeah i was thinking maybe what you're alluding to is more under priority number two that's Max, where I put it. I maximize outside that. financial resources and support through partnerships, grants, and proactive financial management. Maybe there needs to be a key indicator under there to, to what you're suggesting we do for future funding. Well, let, me, let me take a stab at this. I think, Phil, what, you're, what I think I hear you say is, Here's a master list of our needs, physical, capital, operational things. And here's how much money we got to do this. Exactly. And there's a gap between point A and point B. And how do we deal with that gap? I think that's what you're trying to get at in a, in a high level. Now, how we word that you know, will be subject to discussion. But um, clearly, in your comments, there's a, there's a, there are a significant underfunding of future capital and operational needs that is the 800-pound grill in the room that at some point needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like what Commissioner McDowell said. Priority two, in a very generalized sense, maximizes outside financial resources. But as an indicator, there might be room to slip one in there that talks about, you know, uh, you know, the, the identification and development of financing tools to help fund our capital requirements. If, if I might jump sure. in, because I had a thought, mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, as you were talking, I, I, I would remove the outside financial resources and make all, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's, financial. Um, yeah. all financial resources. It's grants. It's the ability to borrow. It's charging appropriate, having the appropriate fee structure mm -hmm. for mean, all different kinds of things. That would be fine with me as a pri overall priority, except I still think we mm -hmm. need an indicator to drive it. In other words, otherwise, when under this priority two, we look at the indicators and we're not calling out that specific need, which is we need financing mechanisms. Um to borrow money to help grow our city and support mm -hmm. our infrastructure. And, and, and I mean. But we could have that as an indicator. That's what I mean. Yeah, we need under that. an indicator yeah, yeah. there. I think okay. we need an indicator. All right. 
So what I think I'm hearing you say, we strike under priority two, we strike outside to say maximize financial resource support through partnerships, grants, and proactive fiscal management. And then I'm suggesting to meet current and future capital and operational needs. I like that. Because it, it, you're talking about where you're at today versus where you're going to be down the road. <laughs> But uh, as that, opposed to adding an indicator. No, no, then I'm going to suggest another indicator. I'm just trying to capture the in the priority um, okay. to meet, meet uh, to address current and future. Okay. Current and future. Capital and operational needs. And then as a an additional indicator under this section, right. adding Okay, yeah, so adding 2.2, um, suggesting that because you don't have it in place, maybe right. as you, you, you basically a list, an uh, indicator identifying a list of options for consideration to, to meet that gap. Right. Now, it doesn't commit you to anything other than okay. here's, here's, here's our need. You got, you got revenue bonds, you got tax right. increases, you right. got grant, you know, whatever that looks like, maybe that's the indicator exactly. that gets, I think, what you're, you're stabbing at. You got it. Make sense? Okay. Okay. All right. Back to your budget, your snapshot. Pretty good here. We're going to check on 3.2, all right? Oh, I'm sorry. On 3.3, uh, it says during the 2024 budget process. Um, I'll go back. Does that still make sense? Do we strike 2024? What's the What's the take on that? I put the 25. I think in 3.3, I think it should just be period after the review you got process. You've got to take out the years. Take out between finance and districts because it, it's not just districts. It's also city departments. So I think it's develop and implement an annual collaborative revenue analysis and rate request review process, period. <clears throat> All right, so here's where I'm going to take a stab as your consultant. Um, do you want to really track that? Or if that's something you're doing, I mean, that's probably part of your annual budgeting process. <laughs> you, this gets back to the point of here's our cost, here's our funding, you know, if there's a gap, how do you want to do it? I don't know that it rises to an indicator, but I'm just taking a stab at that. But Jerome, this is back in your, your wheelhouse as well in terms of, of how you handle that budgeting process. I know at one point your finance or your, your fire district was doing a study of future needs and they were trying to say what, what do we need for the you do an assessment, I think, for your fire district, right? Yes. I recall. So I remember that being part of the conversation, but then you know, rate structures and utilities and all that are really just kind of you're you're trying to do that annually. So my question is, is that does it still make sense to even have it as an indicator or is it just kind of an assumed process? Well, it's part of the existing process that we're refining based on the study that we're having done by an outside party right now. Okay. So and that's specifically to, on fire or everything? No, it's all of our oh, okay. all across the board. Okay. Rates. okay. Some of the some of the um, rates are already done by an outside party like fire and mm -hmm. some of our road and drainage. So this will give us a baseline of everything that we charge and then allow us to sort of have that collaborative process as it relates in the indicator. Okay. So I think it is valuable to keep it there, especially gotcha. until we get the current system right sized, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that we stay accountable. Okay, so it's still, so instead of 2024, probably 2025, you think that the study would be completed by 2025? It will be complete by 2025. Okay, all right. So we're gonna do that to 2025. And it sounds like, so once again, that's, that's, a, um, that's a study that's gonna, send you down a different path and it looks yes. across your board of, of revenues and expenses and, and what you might need to do at the Correct. rates, it utilities. Should provide. Yes. Yep. Recommendations okay. what to go up, down, or sideways. I would given that I'd recommend you leave it as a as at least an indicator for the time being then. I think that makes sense. Okay. Mr. Right. Langdon, did you have something? I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Good there? Thank you. All right. Three point four drills down to your fire revenue district specifically. And then you've got the, the route to tracking of what you're doing through this plan. That's largely what priority four that's indicators are doing there. Pretty good there. Um, can, can I ask a question in connection with priority four? We, I'm trying to remember back when, I know, is it regularly 
uh, as each of our charter officers give their report, I remember um, the city manager's part of city manager's report is pretty much an update on projects and initiatives that the board made decisions on. Um, that's still ongoing. I mean, that's still, is that still in place? I mean, I have to apologize for the fact that like I haven't drilled down on, but we've not really in recent months that I can remember last year actually discussed those, you know, like we ask, does any charter officer have any right. thing to say? But, but periodically there is a report that goes pages long of all the, the end of the month. Yeah. Right. It's an end of the month report. Mm -hmm. And so it's there as part of priority for uh, I'm waiting to make a comment that we probably ought to devote a little bit of time to that because it goes to what Commissioner McDowell said about following some of these projects, some of these priorities, some of these indicators on a regular basis throughout the year. City manager does work to prepare those. <laughs> it is a good report. I used to track it every month and I'll be the first to say in the last half a year, there's just been so much going on. I haven't focused on it and this made me think of it again and and it bothered me that I hadn't taken the time to really drill down on it and see where we were on a lot of this stuff. You know, so if I remember it, I'll ask it at a one on one. So I, it's just a comment, okay. you know, sorry for my digression. I guess the question is, and that may be, I, I'm assuming a number of these things that are in your plan, you're probably commenting on your, your report, but. Well, yeah, the report is updated monthly and it shows everything that we've been tasked to do this outstanding. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, we're happy to go through it however often or however you like it to be done. I think the attorney's office and the clerks have one very similar as well. Mm -hmm. So they're good. They yeah. They're really, really good. Really informative and it kind of gives you an idea and it's not just us giving it, giving us an idea, it's giving the citizens, you know, all they got to do is just look at it and, oh, this is where we are on this. But um, yeah, it is updated as best as it can be each month. Um, but there is a lot of them that do not get updated because maybe they had no action or no movement on it. And, and we can talk about it because I, I noticed, like you, I watch so often what the public say, and, and they ask so many times the same questions about things that we know are in process, but we haven't talked about them for a while because they're right. in process. Right. So, right. so okay. Okay. All right. Five. New new folks processes there, and then we put at one point all these different accreditations were in different categories. We just did a catch all under good governance. So encourage that uh, continuation of recognition of operating at the highest and best management practice level. All right. So uh, wait. Oh, Five point one. We're we're doing welcome packets through the utilities department. I'm pretty sure I heard you were doing that at one of my meetings here before. I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to get hold of one of those. Okay. Night. Oh, you're back. Yep. Yeah, I just want to piggyback off that. And, and I am very grateful that it's going through the utilities department, but how are we reaching those that do not have city water and welcoming them? How, how are we doing that? Because not everybody yeah. has city water. We have the newcomers meetings. Yeah, but th that's different than these welcome packets. Mm -hmm. These welcome packets, I would love to see what's included in them. Um, but how are we reaching those that do not get utilities? Uh, so Commissioner, we can speak to indicator 5.2, the online welcome packet. We have completely revamped that page. If you go to northportnfl.gov forward slash welcome, we've created a comprehensive page where people can go and find information and ways that they can connect with us, sign up for our newsletters, um, answer frequently asked questions. Um, we do work with the utilities department. We've created a print product that directs people to that page. And we make those available at our Newcomers Day um, events and other events where we can distribute those. Um, we don't have a means or a method to connect with every new resident when they move in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the utilities department does when they come online mm -hmm. um, with as customers. And so we provide those print products to the utilities department along with any other materials that they provide um, to direct people to that online resource. 
So that online resource has been done, check completed. Right. Yes. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> Another one off your list. That's the new, like, new homeowner portal. Correct. Right. I mean, I just used it because while I moved from one one location to another within Welland Park, I need to go through the utility process and all. And it, it was incredibly user friendly. And it does direct you to all kinds of opportunities to get to understand the city better, you know. Uh, and even if you don't have water and sewer, you know, it, you still need FPL, you still need, in some cases, gas with TECO. So, like, you get directed there, even though they aren't city services. It's pretty cool. It's really, I, I meant to say it to you privately, but I'll say it here publicly. It's a great, <laughs> great resource. Well, we'll take that. Thank you. Our team did a great Got job it. to put all that together. Yeah. And that's available for anybody, yep. regardless. Yes, ma'am. It's on our website, northportfl.gov forward slash welcome. You can find all the information. Right. Thank you. Good. That's our strategic vision plan in play, right? <laughs> as, you, as you speak, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then you into uh, workforce um, management and attraction, retention, employer choice efforts. Good stuff there. Anything there to change? Um, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Langdon. So is this called? Uh, I'm going to go back to 7.2. Do we call it Sarasota County Technical Institute? Is that the right word, or is it Suncoast? Suncoast. It should be Suncoast. I just remember that coming up before. So, okay. Right, Commissioner Langdon, are you with Priority Seven or? I'm, I'm with Priority Seven. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to make a comment that of all the places I've ever worked, I think that this city um, does the best job I've ever seen of. <clears throat> Um, recognizing and rewarding and celebrating our workforce. And um, a very close friend of mine used to, and I might have said this at an earlier meeting, but a very close friend of mine worked in the building department of a municipality outside of the city of Boston who will remain nameless. And I would share with her things that we were doing, you know, the barbecue and, you know, different kinds of programs we have for our employees. And she says, wow, we never did anything like that. So I just want to give our human resources department and anyone else who participates in those programs, I think we do an incredible job. Mm -hmm. um, and at least from my limited point of view, I think this is a great place to work. So I just want to give people credit for that. We'll tell you that um, I do a lot of public speaking at conferences and events, trade associations, things of that nature, and I always get asked. <laughs> the next one I've got is coming up this summer in, in Missouri for their municipal league to talk about recruitment, retention, employer choice issues. Okay. It is an area that a lot of cities and counties are struggling with, mm -hmm. and I wear my recruitment hat as well. It's much harder to recruit in today's environment than it ever was okay. in the past, and so um, organizations that do that Right. are a step above those organizations. They don't have a vision, don't have a plan, don't recognize or, or, or treat their employees appropriately, or try to covet their, right. and recognize their goals and accomplishments. So congratulations yeah. on that, because a lot great, of people aren't doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have a great culture, and it's really hard to measure that, mm -hmm. um, but I think that we do. But you have, you're doing some employee surveys and programs, yeah. so that's a part of it. Um, a yeah. good portion of that, we talk about succession planning and recruitment. If you don't ask your employees about how they're doing, it's kind of hard to determine if you're really doing things well. So you right. do have some, some internal outreach on that. So, good. Just hang on to this then, okay. So this is good, I'm pleased that you have this for those reasons we talked about as well. Uh, Work-life balances and then also your engagement with your outside players to encourage mentorships and programs and giving back to the community. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner McDowell? Yeah. yeah, the only thing I, I again, the project was. Okay, sure. Well, yeah. um, <clears throat> and again, I'm sorry, city manager. I, it's such a new project. I'm not grasping the acronyms that you had mentioned earlier. Um, the long term technology system upgrade, whatever. What oh, the ERP? ERP. ERP. Yep. ERP. Okay. So that's going to be a project? I don't think there's a CIP for this. <laughs> there's not. But um, <coughs> it is something that we're starting to talk about a little bit more um, 
often. Mm -hmm. So maybe that could be just added as the good governance since the website has been upgraded um, to the point that from the old system to right. the new website. Okay. Um, I can't think of any other projects except for that ERP that would okay. make that list. So. Okay. You're talking about a whole enterprise system and replacing all your foundational for your cross yeah, oh, yeah. cross programs. Yeah, those will cost some dollars <laughs> and cost you multiple years of information as well. In the it's nature a heavy of it as well. Hopefully, Definitely. it's not going to be a trek. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, round in the corner, disaster response and recovery management. This was a, a goal that was, or a pillar, excuse me, that was added uh, after uh, Hurricane Ian and the impacts that you probably to some extent are still feeling. <laughs> Once in a while I was driving around still seeing large trees that have been blown over and you know, in different parts of the, of the community. So there's only one priority. We had a bunch of things that were all identified as a priority and then we said, all right, well let's change that and have one priority and identify a variety of programs. There are no uh, indicators yet here, and I'm okay with that because it is still new. And until you get your arms around what you want to accomplish, it's kind of be different to, uh, to, to really refine it. So this is one that I think you will be revisiting and adding and making some adjustments going forward. So but basically, let's take a look at what happened during Hurricane Ian as a priority and figure out what we need to do in the programs and initiatives. Look at your communications plan, look at your policies, procedures to make sure you can maximize your recovery for FEMA dollars and from the uh, Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, look at your fund balance policy, determine if it's enough to carry it. You will get reimbursed if you do everything right, check off all the boxes, but you've got a lot of carrying costs to cover. Sometimes those are years <laughs> before you see those dollars. So you gotta make sure you're prepared to address that because your vendors that you're engaging have to be paid in the meantime or you won't get that work done. <laughs> Um, getting back, uh, the mayor, to your comment about tree replacement program, this was kind of a broad statement, but there was a recognition that there was a lot of trees lost during that, and you probably need some time to reinvest in that. And then looking at um, how you help your businesses and residents kind of recover. <laughs> and I know, you know, waiving of permit fees and things like that, so that's all part of that. So this was kind of a broad base one. Uh, as I say, it's okay that this has got to go through some maturation before you probably get further. But is there anything anybody wanted to change or add on this one? Vice Mayor. I was just wondering, I mean, on one, have, have we not gotten there yet on that one? I mean, we do, we just recently looked at our revised emergency plan, which included communications, I assume, like, is there more to go on that? Does it need to stay there or is it an accomplishment? <laughs> well, you had a city emergency communication plan. I'm not sure if it know. includes everything that's in here, though. I can't be sure. We have to follow back up to see if it includes the yeah. pre-ongoing and post-disaster messaging is effective. Let me, let's take a look at that. Yeah, and then the only other one is explore the establishment of a tree replacement program. I thought we had the tree replacement program. We just haven't launched. We really don't have it yet. Okay, good. Thanks, Commissioner. And I'm good. Okay. Yeah, we, we've kind of put it on the back oh, burner right. pending the natural yeah. resource they just got here. Okay. So I'm sorry. we're waiting patiently and starting to, okay, now we need, we need to be we more to diligent to getting it, getting it done. <laughs> Got to get it in the ground, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Stacey Licio, who is our disaster service manager, can help us with that answer. Yes. So, unfortunately, Hurricane Ian recovery is still very much ongoing and will probably still be going on for several years into the future. Um, we're also still working on improving based off of our Hurricane Ian lessons learned. So we're still implementing some things there within the program and citywide and with our partners as well. So I think we should definitely keep the evaluation, I guess, is ongoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. I may, may. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. Just to make a comment on this, I could see it one at some point we drop Ian, and this just sort of becomes the template of how we <clears throat> recover from any natural disaster. Okay. But for now, we're okay leaving it for now because yeah. you're still That's kind of good. in that effort based on what you're saying. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I went back to my parking lot list. I think we captured everything. Mm -hmm. so we'll make sure as we went through it. We got the plans. We got septic to sewer covered, tree planting programs in a couple spots, and addressing 
the big one. <laughs> How do you fund everything you want to do? <laughs> All right. OK. All right. So um, that gets us through uh, your plan. So we'll, we'll come back, we'll tweak, make an adjustments, come back to a document, work with staff, and maybe some adjustments in some of your, your indicators as proposed here as well. We'll clean that up. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about your ranking um, and how you want to proceed. And whether you want to rank, you don't want to rank, this is where the rubber always meets the road in the process. So, you know, I've described this in the past. I, the best analogy is George Orwell and the, you know, all animals are equal, it's just some are more equal than others. This is you love this daughter or son more than you love this daughter or son and putting it in another approach. But this is tough because you have a pretty ambitious plan. It's not overly, you know, it's not out of control or anything of that nature, but there's a lot of stuff coming at your staff to say these are our priorities, these are what we want to accomplish. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I've yet to run into a, a community that has all the money that they can do everything they want to do. So you've got to eventually say, what am I going to, what am I going to fund? And to what extent am I going to do that? So that's where prioritization of your strategic vision and goals comes into play. I will be candid with you, not all cities do this. I will tell you most of the progressive ones that are trying to get to priority-based budgeting gets you focused as a policy board to say, all right, these are the things we want to do, but these are the most important of those things we want to accomplish. And I know that gets really, really challenging. So you're not alone in that regard. So um, you know, this, this concept of <laughs> what do I focus on <laughs> if I'm staff in terms of trying to get that. So the classic Dilbert approach there. So um, when we went through this before, um, we, had a, we had a process. You went through a prioritization effort that got you to some real concerns about how you did this. And I appreciate this is always uncomfortable because it really kind of forces you to make some really hard decisions. And so what we're trying to do at the 25th is um, to narrow down the number of priorities. And we may have added one here in the grand scheme, but I think for the most part, we've tried to keep these smaller than what we had done in the past. So when we did this the last time, and you went through a process and there was a lot of angst and confusion about it, um, what I suggested is that we take the data that you had already put together and put them into, into tiers. So anybody that had basically any of the priorities that you identified, and what you did is took each of your pillars, you ranked your priorities from where they were, and then we did a weighted average, your staff did a weighted average, and basically what I suggested is that, all right, if you wanted to say how do you prioritize that, you could take those that had a super majority of your, of your votes as a weighted average, that those became highest priorities within each of those pillars. And those that simply just had a simple majority of yours, three votes basically, weighted average, they would become a medium level priority. And those that had less than a majority, i.e. one or two of you, uh, that had them as identified, that they became lower priorities. So that was how we kind of landed, but that was obviously with a, a lot more priorities than we're dealing with now. So I just want to bring you back to how we got to that point. So the options that I think you have before you, assuming you still want to do prioritization, is you could simply take within each pillar, and there's different priorities, uh, some have more priorities than others, you could simply say for pillar A, pillar B, pillar C, whatever the approach is, you individually rank those that you think are the highest, and there could be more than one. <laughs> Um, and those that are medium are those that are long range. So simple one, two, three. Um, now, if you put them all in ones, then you know that'll that'll give some sense of where that lands. But so there's some there's some challenges with that. But basically, that's one way of of doing prioritization. The other is going back to similar to what we just proposed that you did the last time. Within each pillar, you prioritize from highest to lowest. So if there's six priorities, it's one to six. If there's two, it's one to two, those sort of things. And you're going to get a sense of where you are individually and collectively as a group. And we could then go back to that same model to say collectively those that have supermajority versus majority versus a um, less than a majority to kind of get a sense of ranking within that arena. Um, the other one, I throw this out, but I know it would be very painful <laughs> to you, is you can take your, what is, 33 priorities and rank them from 1 to 33. But that's a difficult task. So I throw it up there in jest, but it's just it's simply another option if you wanted to consider that. And then the last is, those are the ways we often will see these done, but every community does this a little bit differently. So you've certainly got an option for conversation. So 
Uh, with that as a primer, let's kind of get a sense of what you want to do with regards to prioritization and which model. Because what will take place, assuming you are going to prioritize your priorities, <laughs> we're going to finish this up, we'll get them all together, and then you're going to have a chance to vote on them. And we just need to know how to, how to work with your staff to structure that survey. So. Okay. Mr. McDowell? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so we did do the survey and ranked them back in September. Right. Um, we did all of that. Um, a lot has changed since September. Um, a lot of the priorities have changed um, based on the discussions with the critical infrastructure needs of the city. Um, I, I would be comfortable at this point not ranking them, um, bowing out and just saying this is our strategic plan and recognize that we're going to do what we can do given the priorities of the last few months with the police station, the EOC, mm -hmm. and, and, and those financial needs. Um, so I, I, I don't see the need to re-rank anything and go through that whole process again when we just did it a few months ago. But I do recognize that some of those priorities have changed. But I am more in favor of let's get this pri this strategic plan approved and mm -hmm. adopted, and we're going to just have to focus on the budget this coming year and focusing on getting that police station done um, and all of the other things that we need, which is the water patrol structures that we already have kind mm -hmm. of a plan in place for. Stuff. Okay. So um, that that's my take, but I am more than willing to hear what my fellow commissioners think. But um, that's it. Okay, Vice Mayor. Scary thought to think I concur, Commissioner. Holy cow! <laughs> I agree. Holy cow! Well, it's interesting. Well, <laughs> well, op I like option two, and I think we sort of have been there. Like it's it, it's good to. You know, the prioritization we have, we could tweak them, but I think they would be highly affected by the resources we have available to address some of those priorities. Mm -hmm. And I think they're best left to our budgeting process and our, and our general discussions on these subjects. And that's the danger of this. It, 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 be, it could become easy to lower something in order of priority simply because it's not financially as attainable or perhaps to put something up higher on the list of priorities that would so impact some of the other priorities that when the day is done, mm -hmm. we have to go back to the drawing board and say, we need a better balance here because we do have limited resources with some relatively significant priorities. I think we're coming to the realization you can't pick one or two priorities and devote all your resources to them at the expense of all the other priorities throughout the city. I think that creates a bad imbalance and the pillars start to get shaky. So I would say, let's let it lay and work our way through this year. We sort of know where we are. I think the priorities we've decided on are good ones. I think we'll have to make a lot of our decisions as to where we deploy our resources based on how much resources we have and what are the realistic expectations of accomplishing some of these priorities in a, in a relatively timely fashion? So, you know, okay. that's my take. All right, Commissioner Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this is truly frightening because I must say, I oh, am sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. I'm going to step so back as lightning is about to strike, <laughs> I think, here. Yeah. All three of us agreed. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 I mean, clearly, in yeah. previous There's something in the water. In, in previous <laughs> conversations, we've all expressed a reluctance to prioritize our pillars. You know, we don't want to do that. Um, and we've also expressed the desire to not um, denude one pillar in order to, right. you know, put all that funding in another mm -hmm. pillar. Um, and although I think some folks in the community might view me as extreme, I'm always about balance. And sometimes that balance, although we balance our budget annually, I think sometimes it might take five years to balance our pillars, but I think the best tool to do that is our budget process at this okay. point. 
I think we've done a really good job of identifying what's really important to the community. And now we'll put our money where our mouth is. All right, well said. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree with all of you that we've already gone through this mm -hmm. and gone, had some yeah. really extensive conversations when this was brought up before. So I agree with Commissioner McDowell that we just, um, we're gonna, this is gonna come back to all of your yeah. revisions, yeah. right? So let me suggest, so if you went back and I've, I've, I've attached them here, but I wasn't gonna show them today, but basically, Remember where we were at when we last met last fall, we looked at kind of how you rank these priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did is some of those no longer priorities, but they fall under programs or initiatives within the same general pillar. So there's some pretty good data here about where you as a board related to. So, you know, we've tweaked some things so they're not a, a direct relationship, but there, there clearly is enough there to probably give some sense to staff about where you were at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and to your point there, it's, you know, we're at a point in time, you're going to finish this process up. We'll get this all nailed down. You've got your budgeting coming up. You're going to end up with probably, you know, you get an election coming up and all this. You'll have a chance to come back and revisit this at this point. Um, so I, I'm OK, I think, from my standpoint of saying where you're at, I think you've got some good direction from this process and, and how, we, how we articulated some, try to make some, some sense out of the, the, the results. Um, but at some point, you know, you can come back and revisit this after you've tweaked this plan, you have a new board, you review that process, and then at that point, maybe you take a fresh stab at something at that stage. I think that's where you're at. Is that a fair statement? Fair. Yes, go ahead. How long do you think it will take for you to take today's conversation, these, what, seven sheets of paper, right. make these, they're relatively minor tweaks, in my opinion, they're relatively minor. Um, I think the biggest uh, challenge may be for city manager to help figure out what some of those you get uh, the projects. Limited, those yeah. projects yeah. are and creating that new little column, however that's going to mm -hmm. look. Are, are you looking at maybe two months? Oh, no, I, I'm hoping <laughs> I, I, it's, it's going to be at least probably three weeks out with me just with my schedule that I've got in the area, but I'll, I'll I'll work on this to get it, but in the meantime, I assume staff will also start pulling together where the projects are, and then we just marry the documents. So I would say within a month. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And the reason why I was asking is if, if you can get that finalized document, whatever that's going to look like, mm -hmm. so that we then we can do a formal adoption of it, so that we then we have it on the book, this is put to rest until we get the next commission on board. Mm -hmm. And then whenever that is, that they start strategic planning again. Mm -hmm. But put this to rest so that way then the city manager has it for the budget for the next couple yeah. of years at right. least. And so, um, Jerome, you're, you're in budget. I'm, I know staff's doing preliminary work, but when do you start? Is it April when you generally start? Conversations. But the budget never ends, sir. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> it's the one piece I, yeah, I appreciate. He remembers. <laughs> uh, what, we, does, we started the kickoff, and now we're getting information from the departments, and now mm -hmm. we're sort of scrubbing those numbers. So a month is fine. Okay. All right. So that works with your schedule, and yes. that. And as I said, um, I think there's enough data there to give you a sense of where kind of the the sentiment of your commission is at, yes. with the recognition that it's it's kind of a not entirely together. But as I said, they're all within the same pillars, even though they're not may not be identified as priorities now versus what they were when you voted on them. So, okay. Awesome. So right. we should probably see final adoption May ish. Uh, yeah, subject to yeah, I think that's you know I think a ish. month a month ish yeah I think that's a all realistic right. goal yeah, absolutely commissioner. Okay. All right, so we went through this. Um, I would just highlight, um, as I said before, this is not a, des you know, even though I use the destination version in the GPS, this is very much about the journey. And you're going to have tweaks and adjustments and things that happen as you go further. This is a constant, just like Jerome said, it's your budget never really ends. Your strategic visioning, this process ends, but the evaluation of how things are going is an ongoing effort going further, and it just is a continual loop that you go further. So a couple of recommendations. Uh, we talked about the scorecard, and I know you've been doing uh, on the website, on their performance measurement. I know Heather's relatively new with the organization um, to, to help lead in that effort and goal. So the effort there is this should not be something you do once a year and you just kind of forget about it. It's something that ought to be leaving, breathing, leave, living, breathing, <laughs> 
and tracking the success for you as elected officials as well as your community to understand kind of where things go. So you're on, on the path of that. Uh, we suggested that you do that at least some point, whether that's part of your, your, your existing formatting process, but either at least at a, at a half year basis, but certainly uh, many communities do this on a quarterly basis where they kind of update so that there's some recognition of where you're at and a chance to, to cross and celebrate some of your successes. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece that uh, I do a lot of work with, uh, with councils and boards working with evaluations of their senior staff and then ultimately the department's heads also being evaluated. Many of the organizations have taken your strategic vision and those goals and priorities and incorporated that into their performance management system as they evaluate their employees. So in other words, it's not just as a manager, they want to be reflective of what you want. What you're telling me is important, we're going to do, we're going to develop and beyond just running the day-to-day -day function. But in order to do that, it's not just the manager, it's your department heads, it's the staff and everything else. And so at some point, when I talk about this being evolutionary, a lot of organizations have dropped the traditional evaluation instruments and tied them back to your strategic plan. And everybody does that a little bit differently, but it's a way to make sure everybody's got the same hymn sheet you're working, whether I'm a, uh, a, a, an hourly employee working in a given department or I'm a department head, uh, how do we do that and make sure that there's that alignment there. So just something for consideration going further. And then, uh, as I said, the best management practice in local government now is called priority-based budgeting, where you actually are taking your services and your programs and your priorities in your strategic plan and linking them back to your budget so that you are truly spending money and resources that help you accomplish those goals and objectives. And so I would encourage you to continue that path. There's been a lot of communities that have been done. It, for a while, there was kind of cutting edge. It's starting to become much more common. It works in communities as large as Pittsburgh, for example, has a very well-recognized priority-based budgeting program. But even smaller communities are doing it. Obviously, the metrics and the programs look and feel differently in those areas. But continue that goal because it is really a best management practice. And it helps you accomplish your goals and objectives as well. So with that. Um, I'm done, but I'll open it up to any questions, comments, takeaways, anything we need to address that we haven't talked about. Do we have anything else to add? We don't have, we're not going to take any action today. No motion. Okay. You don't need anything? OK. Yeah, your next deliverable will be a, a packet that will come back to you through staff and me uh, that will allow you to adopt this plan and move forward. Great meeting, great yep. process. I, I can clearly see as we go through it Periodically, it gets a little easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was painful. Very good. Yeah, yeah. they were painful. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this, this is a great. This is a great idea. I'm so glad that the city went went in this direction to have a strategic plan. I love the idea of having a plan for things. Tied to metrics. That yes, was the big difference. And, and it yeah. also oh, we say the clarifies plan. and justifies why we're doing things and why we're not doing things. If it's not on that list, then mm -hmm. It's not something, even though it's a fluid document, it's going, it can be changed. Um, as we learned with, with Hurricane Ian, things did change. So um, this is great. Vice Mayor, anything to add? Oh, nope. You're good? OK. Now I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to put the, put the burden on Jerome. At some point, as this plan gets kind of refined, you ought to be considering submitting something to maybe do a presentation at the Florida League of Cities or something about your strategic mm, planning. Because um, there's, there's a, we just finished, uh, SDR just finished its Transforming Local Government Conference, our strategic foresight program of our division. We had a lot of people that do performance management and all this sort of stuff from across the country. It was held in Tampa this year. But you're doing a lot of good work here, and it's good to showcase that work because other like-minded communities, large or smaller, will get together. And I'm sure Heather's got a network of these folks as well. But you're you're far enough along in your process that it'd probably be a, a, a good program to, yeah. to showcase uh, at a league meeting at some point. Right. Thank so. you for all your help. Oh, my pleasure. No, this. this is your your effort. We're just help to help you guide. Hopefully, your grow back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, unfortunately, Commissioner, that train left the station a long time ago. <laughs> so, you know. Thank you. <laughs> but thank you. You guys have always been a pleasure to work with and uh, wish you continued success. And I know that they've talked about getting me back sometime after your election uh, to start your process again. If that it's goes. been so, a pleasure working with you. Likewise, as well. Truly appreciate all of your work. Thanks for your work today. And um, I'm done. Okay. 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 Awesome. <laughs> uh, you're done. We have uh, maybe any public comment? No, we do not have any. Okay. So if there's nothing else, uh, it is 1249, and I adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everybody.